Welcome to SEOconspiracy.com. Today is my friends, very special day because we are going into the matrix. You will understand how Google works as far as those words that terrify you, BERT, hummingbird, ring brain, and also how to deal with those core updates. But we are taking it slightly differently than what we did with Bill Swalski because please welcome Christine Schesinger, who is, in my opinion, what I call the cleaner. <laughs> okay? She's the best at saving the impossible situation. She's like the Tom Cruise, uh, the Mission Impossible uh, SEO. And it helps to have someone like that by your side or on speed dial for certain situation. So we won't get too much into the, the patent nerdy stuff like we did with Bill, but we'll go more into the practical and uh, basically, what is the output? You know, what 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 does Google want? Uh, what's the end game there? And how, how uh, should you um, exercise your art or your? Uh, is it an art? Is it a science? <laughs> well, <laughs> by the way, first, bonjour, Christine. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> Comment allez-vous? <laughs> Je vais That's bien, merci. Je vais bien, merci. That's the limit of my French. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you would destroy me in German, so <laughs> let's not go there. Even if I did take German in, in uh, high school. Uh, what I loved about German is the fact that you can have a whole sentence in one word. <laughs> it's true. And as long as you know what every word and every word in that word means, yeah. then you know the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's the uh, I love that language for that because if you you can quickly kind of understand what's going on just yeah, exactly. with one word. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yes. Today, and I wanted to illustrate uh, our purpose with as a starting point with an article that you wrote on uh, Search Engine Journal, a complete guide to the Google Rank Brain algorithm. We won't get into why I have to pull it out of uh, archive.org. For those listening on the podcast, so on the audio version, I'm showing a screenshot of archive.org. But the fact is that... Um, that was not cool at all. In my opinion, this is, uh, we'll keep it at that. <laughs> but the fact that this is a lot of work and uh, the reasons behind why they pulled it is just insane. But anyways, I said, we won't, into the, we won't get into the, the SEO drama here. <laughs> the, the intent is to give back life to this piece of work because it is a complete guide. <laughs> so we won't read it, okay? <laughs> you you can you can go. Uh, you have the URL now. You can go read it all, but we will uh, use it as a you know foundation as a starting point. Uh, for the conversation about how AI uh, rules Google's and how how the implications of all that, and um, especially since you are a specialist of recovery, penalty recovery, multiple if if you have a website that got hit by fifteen algorithmic penalties plus seven manual penalties, plus you have three hackers on your back, plus you got the mafia knocking on your door. Call Christine. Okay. <laughs> also, I've dealt with all of those. <laughs> you did. <laughs> uh, same time though. <laughs> uh, 
so yes, you are you are the last resort, and you will help us understand how to avoid all those traps and maybe also be a little more um, serene, a little more peace of mind. I think people, website owners right now, need a little more peace of mind, need to be more appeased and, and relax, chill a little bit. Uh, we know what does Google want. You just have to do it well, okay? <laughs> it's not rocket science. It's just SEO, and people tend to make it a lot more complicated than it seems. So to start with, before getting into the specifics of these algorithms, do you think it's it was possible not to go that route, not to go the... Uh, the uh, deep learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence way of uh, building a search engine? I'm not sure whether it's not, whether it'd be possible or not possible just because the entire world is moving in that direction. So what I could say though, is I don't think it's been a positive change because when you're looking at a specific word and its specific meaning in specific context, it gets very specific. Where the old version was, we look, at, we don't know what a dog is, but if the page says dog to it all the time and the page talks about this thing called dog and things relate, we know are related to something called dog, we know this is this dog. And so when someone types something related to that or similar to that or whatever, Google pulls that back. But now it's gotten so specific that if it knows the entity specifically, like an NFL score or a time or a review, um, a data point, it can pull that back easily, does very well. If it is not something that's simply related in a direct line to an entity or entities that are in the same group, similar to each other or related to each other, then it doesn't know what it is. That's where rank brain comes in and we can talk about that mm -hmm. later. But so it doesn't understand a lot anymore on my queries. And I, I, I know other SEOs say the same thing. When you're doing informational query, because they can't tie it specifically to an entity and a node, entity for those who are new to SEO just means noun. So uh, that's all an entity is. Um, then it can't tell you what it is. So it brings back maybe one right result and then tons of irrelevant results. You, you use the word that I never use when it comes to a search engine and Google in particular, you use the word understand. Let's remind everybody that Google has a brain of a, like an aunt or a bee is yeah. smarter than Google, okay? Uh, yeah. it, it analyzes. <laughs> but, well, uh, yeah, I use the word understand and I probably should have been more clear because they're using natural language understanding. Not And a lot of people write that they do NLP. They don't. NLP, natural language processing, would mean as you and I talk, Google would understand what those words mean in the context like our brains do. That's full NLP. They don't do that. They do natural language understanding, which requires interpreters to help them understand the language, sort of like schema. Well, they, they, they even, okay, that's structured data. That's, that's yeah. the easy part. You, um, Christine, does a, Google doesn't know what Christine is, but if you tag it, uh, okay, so first name, uh, Christine, uh, 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 trailing slash Christine, then okay, that's uh, that's the first name. But now, the, the thing is, words become mathematical entities yes. separated yeah. by vectors. Right. So that's important for people to understand that it's it's on that level, and that words don't uh, don't mean anything like they do for us, no, yeah. and especially the old way of doing it. We we spoke about this, but the problem is this will be published first before the other stuff that we we recorded before. <laughs> so, oh, no. so, so, so we'll explain, <laughs> we'll explain again. Uh, the story goes like this. Before, we would just repeat the keyword X number of times, X number of times on the page and X number of times on the anchor text of links, backlinks and internal links. And that's how we did SEO. And Today, 
could you please give us the example about uh, how uh, you can say the word uh, Hulk, Captain America? Are you seeing where I'm going? Yeah. So for those that don't know, the way Google works with language is it gives it a mathematical number, basically, puts it into a knowledge graph. Um, knowledge graph is then mathematically uh, separated into vectors, and vectors are related terms. So if I was to say apples and oranges, uh, Google would know that apples and oranges are somewhat related, and then they would have a topical shield uh, layer over that, which tells them it could be related as a fruit, or it could be related as something else, whatever that something else might be. Well, Apple, so, Apple could be a, a phone. Yeah, <laughs> could, or yeah, it could be computers. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of something for oranges, and I couldn't think anything. But it, but the point is that they understand that there are different topics that these entities, nouns, fall under, mathematically related. And how close they are in the vectors is related by a node which is another mathematical formula, similar to how you do network analysis, if anyone's ever done that with humans. And so it, it attaches a node strength to the relationship. Mm. So if I put in something brand new, and that's how I originally found Rank Brain before it was even uh, Google announced it, was I put in, uh, back in the days we were having droughts, and I live in the desert in Nevada, um, I looked up the water authority rights, so I was, I mean, water rights for Nevada. And I did different cities in our air, in our state. And I got to Mesquite, Nevada, which is a really small town. If you've never been here, you probably have never heard of it. And it didn't pull anything back but the water authority. Now for Vegas, it had all sorts of things. Do, but I know, is I, someone trying to sell you something or you want to pick that up? No, 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 I have it turned <laughs> off, so I don't know why it did that. I don't know why it buzzed me. Anyway, so the, um, the result that I got back was water authority, which is where you pay your water bill for those not in the US. Um, mesquite barbecue, mesquite trees, mesquite um, uh, barbecue sauce. So they were all these things related to the word mesquite, but they weren't related to water authority, water rights or anything related to that. And so I followed this result and I started looking at other areas of Nevada based on population size because we're very restricted population here because 70% of the state belongs to the government. Mm. So I was able to check in different sized cities that have very long distances between each other. And I noticed that the bigger the city got, the more it understood water rights, the smaller the city it didn't. And I followed these over, I think it was like six to eight months, uh, maybe a little bit more. And I noticed them change over time. And so what I then I started expanding the search to other things. And I wrote an article about all this, put it in search engine land. And the day it was supposed to post, Google came out and said it had rank brain. Here's what rank brain is. It was what I had been researching and what I wrote the article about. And then I had to rewrite the article to use the words that Google gave it, you know, because I didn't know entity or anything like that at the time. So um, anyway, so that's how Google does it. So it takes the, it takes the word, it, it maps it to a vector, it maps related items through nodes. Some nodes are in the same vector. And then on top of that, um, there's a topical layer, topical mesh that helps it to understand topical relevancy. Unless I understand yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I understand Yeah, I used the um, uh, Hulk and, uh, and uh, Captain America because the example you gave was yes, if, I, if I say Wonder Woman, the Avengers, uh, Hulk, Captain America, well, Google can tell you are talking about Marvel uh, universe. Exactly. Because in the, in the knowledge graph, they're all in the same vector. Mm. They're related. Mm. They have close node relationships to Marvel. Mm. So that's how you would know. But now you said that uh, basically an entity is a noun. There is also, well, first of all, you have named entities. Uh, so that's when you become, I guess, famous enough yeah. to, have, to have your own uh, uh, number. Or your you are an bot. entity. <laughs> yeah. because, because that's also important. By definition, if you, something exists, it's an entity. Okay, anything, everything, but no, and not not all entities are equal, and especially when I debunk this domain authority uh, myth, because the problem is, well, first it's on the page level, so if you want to use some of those uh, domain authority scores, do it on the page level, not on the domain level. Otherwise, you're just analyzing the homepage. Okay, that's. It doesn't mean that Google 
doesn't have signals linked to trust, authority, and all that stuff. But uh, I, I, you agree that uh, it's those those uh, SEO tools didn't crack the code of those signals linked to authority or whatever. So my trick is very easy. I like easy, simple things. Go into Google Trends, type the name of your website or the name of your brand. And when I get someone asking me, look, this website is before me. This website, I'm, I'm, I'm number five and this website is number two or three. Uh, I got better backlinks. I got better content. What's the deal? 100%, 100% of the times without even preparing it. I go to Google Trends. I type the two name of the brands or the websites and the one who is in front, there's a curve going upward and, and major gap between uh, the, the two. Call it authority, call it branding, call it whatever you want. Uh, that's one of um, the easy way for me to say, if you do that, if you exist in Google Trends, and if the, you see an increase in the demand around your brand in Google Trends, well, everything else uh, about authority and trust and all that stuff, you should be doing it right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if the result is the fact that in Google Trends you see an increase, people are searching more your brands, means you must be do doing something right. Uh, unless, of course, it's something very bad. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is what I do. I, this, is what, this is what I call when I tell a CEO why you never compare your site to other sites, right? Because you don't have any idea why the other site's ranking. And I'm sure he's not going to, they're not going to Google Trends to look. No, but what I was saying is like, you, you could have a, a big uh, surge, uh, you get a big peak in Google Trends uh, about, about you. Not because you did the wonderful job yes. about branding, but because you did something bad. Uh, well, 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 you know, like 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 uh, Harvey Weinstein or Jeffrey Epstein style. Like, okay, we had a we had a client once who he was he's uh, I don't know if you have undercover boss overseas, but undercover boss is where bosses go into their own company in disguise. And they learn about their company and what people think of the company and stuff like that. And they do jobs in the mm. company. So we were doing SEO for a company and they didn't tell us that the CEO was going on undercover boss. <laughs> and uh, overnight, he got very, very popular because he was so hated that they created websites and websites that existed for like his products and properties had forums that just blew up on how much they hated this guy. So it developed into a nice uh, online reputation management project for, for my partner. Oops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just overnight, just that one episode of Undercover Boss, he was so hated, they just annihilated him online. Let me show you something. Uh, when you were talking, I was trying to replicate it. Okay. This is drink wine in French. Uh, and it doesn't matter. I could be uh, on this browser. I'm not logged in, but I could type a, a couple of uh, queries regarding uh, wine in French, okay? So, so far, so good. All French, then look. I lost Google. It doesn't know anymore, okay? And, and that's that's pre rank brain. That's like V I N. I don't know what the F does that mean. Well, it it does have a little bit of my history. Okay, uh, let's let's backtrack. I I I typed a couple of things. It's and it's all in French. It's all fine. And then boom. Uh, and what I see. I can't, I don't know if I can duplicate it now, but I know that it's going to break when I see, uh, usually I see here, um, like only a few dozens, like usually like 65, 70 results. And, and I know I'm on a query that's, uh, that's going to break. 
I have this special power because I live in a very tiny country called Andorra, which doesn't exist. Okay, we don't exist. We 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 are no man's land. We don't have an app store. We don't Google doesn't know we exist. So sometimes we are English, sometimes we are Spanish, sometimes French, uh, Catalan. So I, I, I'm able to to kind of go back in the matrix, go back in time, and see results where Google doesn't know what the context is. Because if I repeat uh, Apple, you took Apple, okay. And I tell you, like like we did SEO 10 years ago, I, I tell you 200 times Apple. Yeah, I'm going to rank on Apple, the company, Apple, the fruit, uh, and maybe some other apples are there. It was all good. But now, I don't know if it's more important, but I think it's at least equally important. And when you see passages indexing and all that stuff, you heard me explain that the mystery word game where where you, uh, you never heard me play that? That's how I explain uh, semantic SEO is in the first 300 words of your page, remove all the keywords. Like you have every single time you have your topic, okay, your targeted keywords, remove it. Can you still understand what is the topic? Can you guess like the, the ghost semantic uh, field or whatever you want to call it? Can you play the mystery world game? You have TV shows like that. And um, my entire strategy of what I call the topical mesh is based around the mystery world game, meaning you should be able to express something using a context, using more than synonyms, more you know, everything you can explore the topic. Um, and if you're able to guess, especially it's, it's a very interesting exercise because you just remove like a couple of instances of a couple of words and it makes no sense. The content makes no sense anymore. So now, what do I do? That's happening on the page. Around the page, you, you my, my visualizations that you see on Twitter or Instagram for SEO Conspiracy, that's also playing the mystery word game, but around the page. And now, since especially since the May core update, something that nobody talked about, I see more and more the backlinks especially on the topical trust flow of Majestic, the smell of the backlinks on the more like competitive, especially the very competitive keywords, it's starting to, do you need to be aligned and has nothing to do with your content. It's only uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, the um, categorization of uh, your backlinks. So everything needs to be in the right place at the right time, who is in relation to what and why on the page, around the page, on site, and around the page, off site. If you do machine learning, it's pretty common sense that's where Google wants to go. It wants everything to be really organized. And the worst you can do is uh, play on words. I, I remember doing a, a page around how, um, how about how a, a search engine works and I, 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 the title was under the hood of a search engine hood is for cars okay hood engine car so if you say under the hood of a search engine you're confusing google do not do that you really need to be um very specific and very precise. And this, that's exactly also what you said. The more we're going to go in the future and the more to be understood by Google, you need to be good at this uh, mystery word game. Well, and that is part of um, machine learning for, for um, language, right? Is that they remove a word and see if the machine learning can figure out what the word should be. And so the reason Bert was so revolutionary is Bert could do that forward and backwards without having ex actual context. Like it could take it, it could figure oh, it out. Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop the press. Yes, Christine, yes. Christine, stop. 
we'll we'll finish with the big one with Brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, Bert, explain to us Bert. Because a lot of people, they, I don't know why, Google said, oh, Bert, Bert. So people are like, ah, ah Bert, please tell us. What I always tell SEO is this first, Bert is not about SEO, and except that what it does to language. Um, Bert is just a much cheaper, faster, easier way to process uh, machine learning for language. So in the past, they had to go only one direction. They had to have certain context to understand what the missing word would be, the mystery word. That's how they would test the machine learning. Now they're able to do it forward and backwards, bi-directional, the B and BERT, right? Uh, I have to look up the whole thing to remember the entire acronym, but um, bi-directional, it's a bi-directional transformer and it's a pre-trainer. So a lot of people who think it's like, a, at the level of search, it's not. They use it to pre-train their models for machine learning. Uh, so it's a faster, cheaper, easier pull on resources. Um, it What it does though, is it does mean that they're using much more machine learning in the search results. And so yeah. uh, the way I've seen that applied is, and I can't say for sure that the pre-training of BERT made this happen, but I have a feeling it did happen around the same time. As I tell people now, you have to check if you see a drop in your site around any update is uh, check your if you've been query shifted. What do you so, mean by that? What is query shifted? So an easy example is I had a client who had like 100,000 visits on the word eggplant or nightshade vegetables, nightshade vegetables. Mm -hmm. And suddenly all that traffic went away. And I, I did a search on the site. Um, key terms from GS, uh, GSC and found that 80% of their traffic was related to that nightshade vegetables key term. Then I go in and find out Google decided that the page wasn't relevant for nightshade vegetables. It was relevant for nightshade vegetables list. Well, the traffic for nightshade vegetables list is virtually non-existent. Nobody's searching for mm. the list portion, right? Even if I wanted a list of nightshade vegetables, mm -hmm. I'm probably not putting a list in there. But that's what they sh they moved them to. So they lost all the other terms off the root, and they got shifted to this. Now what they could do is write content to nightshade vegetables and pick that back up. But um, because of the way they're being so specific about language, they decided that that page was more relevant for nightshade vegetables list, not nightshade vegetables. So got it, got it. Do you also oh, no? We we forget. I was going to ask like a tinfoil, tin, tinfoil okay. hat question. But, but let, let, let's, before we go into uh, conspiracy theories, let's stay focused on, okay, uh, something very interesting I read about YouTube algorithms is, like you said, uh, Bert is pre-training. YouTube, yeah. they, they have one machine learning that does all the anti-spam, uh, relevancy, all that stuff. And it's another one that does the ranking. Uh, again, it's not because YouTube is doing it that Google is doing it. Okay, guys, don't please don't start a SEO myth. But I, I, I found interesting that um, you can... And I use, uh, I have a friend who uses uh, BERT with uh, GPT-2, OpenAI GPT-2. So a GPT-2 on steroids with BERT just by itself. But for Google, a BERT by itself is nothing. For your own, you could use BERT uh, to, to improve GPT-2 or whatever you want to do as an experiment. But GPT-2 without the rest, uh, and or RankBrain without the rest, or Hummingbird. So now, let's move on to the next one. Hummingbird. What is it? Well, Hummingbird was the original shift into the machine learning where we move from strings to things. So that's the very first like uh, machine learning-based algorithm. So Google went from looking at strings, dog doesn't mean dog, it's just D-O-G is in the anchor text, G-O-D is in the page, G-O-D is in the title, G-O-D is in the URL, G-O-D is in the site architecture, therefore, I mean, D-O-G, I reversed it, G-O-D, I meant D-O-G. Christmas, Christmas time, I guess my brain did a dyslexic thing. So anyway, so D-O-G is in well, all well, the well, same. Well, just to be honest with everybody, uh, you, you, you dropped CBD in your eye 
uh, before the. <laughs> so, so, so maybe there was THC in the CBD. And, uh... No, that's <laughs> just that's kidding. But, but just so people know, I put some CBD neck rub on. Some of it got in my fingers, and it has eucalyptus menthol in it, and I got it in my eye. <laughs> Christine, I told you, smoke the thing. Don't, don't rub it, okay? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, anyway, so, um, so, 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 yeah, Google, hummingbird, yeah, yeah. So, Google knew all those things, so it moved to things, which means entities, nouns. So, people think the knowledge graph is like Google's thing, the knowledge graph that is Google's knowledge graph. Knowledge graphs have been around a long, long time, I think the 70s, 60s, or 70s, even. Oh, and it just, mm. yeah, so Google used Freebase and DBpedia and Wikipedia and all these sources to start attaching meaning to words. So if I put in at that time, if I ran a test and did iced tea, Google knew iced tea was a thing. It's an entity. If I put Rubio's iced tea, well, people don't usually make iced tea out of Rubio's tea. So it's not really sure what that was. So it couldn't really pull back, you know, a proper result. So that's the very first mapping, basically, mm. is the entities out of strings to things. So we, so we know this is an ice, this is glass, this is tea. Mm -hmm. Put these all together, you get iced tea. If I put at that time um, sweet tea, it may have known, because I did these experiments at the time, it may have known that sweet tea was iced tea. It also gave me chemical um, chemistry pages on how to dissolve sugar because mm. it, it, it had both those mapped as a possible answer, So, which led us to rank brain. Um. Well, what's very funny about Hummingbird is Google, in a very sarcastic way, announced, hey, guys, it's been out for a while. Yeah. And not even Barry Schwartz picked up on it. <laughs> so um, it's very easy to explain because it was targeting queries that SEOs don't really, I mean, it's maybe, maybe it would if you do the long tail strategy sometimes, but uh, whatever. It was not about those main commercial keywords. It's, it was more also about trying to, uh, uh, I, was, I was going to say understand, but uh, the example they used was for how many teaspoons are there in a cup? Uh, yeah. That kind of questions. I think that was the exact yeah. example they used. So he was also trying to solve these type of things, which is not a small thing. Now, before we move to the big one, my theory was, uh, I told you before, but I didn't let you answer <laughs> because I wanted you to answer on, on, on the podcast. Uh, you said, well, uh, you see it's broken. And I said, in my opinion, they got in too soon. Jeff Dean is an AI guy. He was at the top of Google with Ben Gomez, who also found AI very sexy. And um, it worked very well in the labs. But once they launched the beast out in the wild, on uh, the humongous uh, size of uh, Google and the web, well, evidently, it didn't work. Why do I know it didn't work? Well, they didn't get a promotion, that's for sure. Jeff Dean is because it just, it's uh, Jeff Dean is into AI. Uh, ben Gomez is into education. And they brought in the cowboy, Pragmakar Raghavan, who is heading search, ads, and voice. And why is Google broken? because he's breaking everything to fix yeah. it, <laughs> okay? And, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And well, there was a time, if you remember, and I still, I don't have anything to back this up. It's just a gut feeling. I have a feeling Matt left around the time they decided to move towards a very strong AI solution because Matt said they would never use AI on the live results because if it broke something, they wouldn't be able to fix it because they wouldn't know why it was broken, which we know now is really true, right? Mm. <laughs> so, um, so the, the AI portion, um, yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think if they had, let's say we're where we are now, but only in the research department of Google, right? Mm -hmm. We're at BERT and we're at, maybe now you could look at releasing it. But prior to this, most people don't know, because I met one of the guys working on it. 10 years earlier, 
Microsoft had a special unit on campus only for learning AI for search and language. And you had biometrics to go in and out. Nobody was allowed in there, but the people that were assigned to that project. And 10 years before Google even mentioned humming, Hummingbird, right? Mm. And Microsoft still hasn't mm. fixed AI. So Google jumped, and I'm sure Google was researching it before that. But I'm just saying, so so I, I do think you're right. I think it was applied way too early. And I think when we get those articles about 50% of searches not resulting in a click, some of that is some of the Google features, but a lot of that is, it's just irrelevant. I, I went through an hour of searches the other night trying to find something and I gave up because I just <laughs> literally could not get a result. And uh, that happens in about 30% of my searches. And I know before Hummingbird, I always got everything like I needed, right? Within mm -hmm. page two pages, maybe not on the first page, but always within two pages. And now it's like, I, I get so frustrated. I go even to Bing and a lot of times Bing is actually better, but sometimes Bing isn't. And sometimes I just give up and I ask friends on Facebook because I, I literally can't find an answer <laughs> like, or, or Twitter. I'll ask friends on Twitter, but mostly Facebook in groups. There, there's um, something really interesting. Um, I think it was in the summer 2013, if I remember correctly, nobody saw it coming, especially Google. The shift to people going straight on the mobile phone to Amazon and doing a commercial search on the app instead of going on Google was huge. They, they took a big chunk of Google ads and commercial queries like this, like I remember, yeah, yeah, 2013, it was over summer where, where, where the, the, the big chunk of those queries was gone or massively shifted to Amazon. Uh, so you do have sometimes like those um, <laughs> enemies or, or like unknown variables and changes, changes in customer behaviors that you can't predict. However, what they can predict very well uh, or what, what they can't predict very well is how when they, they something works in the lab and they launch it uh, into production, well, evidently, yes, it, it, they will most likely figure something out robust uh, that will kind of work. But uh, Google, um, again, because because it wasn't uh, good enough, or there was something more practical, like like the Amazon app, people changed. It's a habit that we use Google. But my point was that this habit could change if, uh, and I believe Bing could become a major player if finally they decide to take it seriously and they unite the efforts. Because uh, I don't know if you remember, but, but the, the, like Bing Australia would do a lunch and, and Bing America would not even know what's, what, what they would, <laughs> what's going on. So, so they would need to, to um, but basically, all the search engines worked well today for the 50,000 keywords that represents 80% of the needs of the regular people searching. Sorry to say, Christine, you are not a regular person, okay? <laughs> you, I'm not. You, you are what's called a power <laughs> user. <laughs> a, a power <laughs> user, uh, you you need more than fifty thousand uh, keywords, but I don't I don't know I don't know any search engine today, or at least real search engines. Okay, those that call and index and have infrastructure, not not those API type of search engines. They'll do a, a pretty fine job. The problem with Google is, yeah, they want it to be the best. They are still the best. But compared to five years ago, it's pretty much a, a disaster on everything around nuance, everything that is a little bit, um, yeah, like again, okay, Apple, <laughs> which Apple am I talking yeah. about? Or, yeah. or if it's simple, is how, how to uh, 
how to tie uh, uh, how to how to wear a hat that's simple okay you can give me the, the the position zero you can give me the people also ask i don't care but when i type which wine should i drink with uh red meat and i get a stupid uh, woman's magazine because they put in uh, structured data no okay yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. that doesn't work it's not smart <laughs> it's it's the informational versus data point micro moments is what google calls mm -hmm. it but but if google can draw a straight entity node relationship between two things and it's easy to pull back right you know it's and mm -hmm. how-to questions are especially good for that but if i was like apple pie Google has an entity, Apple Pie. It knows what it mm. is. So it can just pull back information about Apple Pie. Apple Pie recipes are very tightly, you know, associated in the vector. So they can pull that back, you know. But if I was to come up with some obscure use for Apple Pie, I can't think of one right now, but like, um, you know, whatever it would be, then the node relationship gets, gets very weak and Google doesn't know what to pull back. And oh. that's when rank brain comes in into Google. I I can tell you the example. I, I use it. I used it with uh, Judith, but but she she's a, a lot more uh, naughty than you. <laughs> oh, Judith, Judith is amazing, but um, but I'm she she naughty naughty in a good way. Okay, she's uh, yeah. She's, oh yeah, she is. I, 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 I think she would take it as a compliment. I thought you meant it as a compliment. Yeah, yeah no, no, of course. Uh, uh, and what I what I told her is, I can change. Uh, a website about gardening into a porn website without touching the website. How do I do that? I take a common entity like the cucumber, which is used in gardening and in porn with a little <laughs> bit of creativ creativity and playing around with backlinks around the cucumber. I can totally uh, like slide semantically speaking the website yep. from gardening to porn. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, I had a big brand, and I can't say which one, who, because of their strength and a hole in their website where you could create any page you wanted on the website by typing a search, and those words went into the URL, the title, the H1, and the first content area, um, that was ranking for a porn site. Now, I didn't know the porn site. It was some one I hadn't heard of before, but it was our number four uh, query term in GSC for the site because they they sent 13 million Russian porn spam links to the page. And that's why when Google's like, we're really good at links, I'm like, no. But this is a this was a site that does um, clothing and stuff. And so they had sexy terms in the mm. site, right? So I like when we tried to get rid of the porn pages on the site where they had created quite a few, it wasn't easy because we couldn't just eliminate all the porn terms because fashion uses porn terms. Mm -hmm. and, Right. I mean, not specific. They're not porn, but the crossover terms. They mm -hmm. can be used to either one. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So the site was ranking number four and had 60,000 visits for the porn site. Now, <laughs> there was a man in the middle attack that was redirecting them to the porn site. But Google thought that they were those pages were a porn. Mm -hmm. So you're exactly right. Be specific. Be play the mystery world game. And if you look at uh, passages and next thing and you're like, oh, how the Mystery word game. Uh, uh, make sure you, you even want it, though. You may not want <laughs> passages in the next scene. But but the the thing is, um, okay. Let's go into why do we call it the big one? Is it became synonym of AI? Even if I hate that word, uh, artificial intelligence, rank brain became synonymous. And there's even like a quote saying, "Okay, rank brain is now the boss at Google." Why Why is that? Why is, is Rank Brain? Well, first, please explain to us Rank Brain. So, Rank Brain, simply put, is just when Google's confused on what your intent is because the relationships and the knowledge graph that it uses aren't strong. So, if I put in, um, at the time, I, I used an example in two countries because I was speaking in England and I was speaking in the US. Okay. Just to and let you know, uh, I'm going on to your uh, article. Oh, okay. So, um, sorry, but yeah, I'm yeah, please, please. My article right now, so I don't so, remember everything. But, uh, but uh, so I use suites as one of the terms. Mm -hmm. So, and the and I have a in my presentations. If you look at the presentations I've done on this, you'll see that I had screenshots, uh, one or two years apart. So, in the U.S., when I put in suites, suites does not mean in the U.S. candy. In in England, 
It means candy. It's an alternative form for candy. And so, or chocolate or things like that. And so in the US, I had like Dr. Sweet. I had Sweet Sweat that people use in the gym. I still don't really understand what the product is. Um, it had some candy references, um, but it didn't know what it was. And because it didn't know this, there was no strong relationship for sweets in the US. Um, it, it developed this basically what I call kitchen sink result. Mm-hmm. And the kitchen sink result is like the one I got when I discovered Rank Brain before it was announced, which is in Mesquite. We had Mesquite Water Authority, Mesquite Barbecue, Mesquite Trees, Mesquite Barbecue Sauce, Mesquite. Because when it doesn't know what it is, it gives you the, the, this big result of kitchen sink results of relationships it has to that word in the knowledge graph, but not doesn't have one strong relationship, so it's not sure. Over time, as people search, it will change that result. Mm-hmm. So when people say like they opt, they're going to optimize for rank brain, there are some really, you know, amazing top level black hatters who have their strategies around that. But for every regular SEO, there's no reason to optimize for rank brain because rank brain is going to change. Now, if you own the word, if your site is about this, then surely take over that rank brain result, right? With signals. But 99% of SEOs, that's not why they're trying to rank for rank brain. So rank brain is basically just Google saying, we have this knowledge graph, we have entities, we don't have a strong relationship between the entities that you're searching for. We're going to give you multiple versions of what we think it could be. And over time, users are going to tell us what that is. Now you can't just change this with clicking. That's not going to give you the thing. Yeah, because I know someone out there is like, oh, I'll just click on it a bunch of times. No, that's not how it works. But over time, and I mean a long time, I mean year or two years over those searches, it, it develops an idea of what the entity should be, strengthens a relationship over the others, and that mm-hmm. one will be the one that appears. The others will still appear. They'll just be lower into the page or into the next page because um, they're still loosely related. I'm just thinking of something. Do you remember the Wonder Wheel? Yes, it's actually in one of my my presentations from about two years ago. Uh, I was doing the evolution of how Google was. And like, when language. when did that end? It was 2009, maybe. Uh, it's in my presentation, but I don't know off the top okay. of my head. It was oh, definitely oh, around oh, in 2005, oh, 2007. Oh, oh, is that is that you, search engine? No, Gary Price. On the world, Google. Oh, you're talking about uh, SlideShare. Yeah, it was, a, but it'd be hard to find because I don't okay. even know what. Anyway, anyway, the, the the Google the let let me show a, a screenshot uh, so people understand <laughs> what it is. It would show relationships, okay? And there is an example with Apple. Um, I'll change the I'll change the screen so you can see what I'm showing. Hold on. One, two, this is here, and you want to see this, and oh, I see me. going there. There you go. <laughs> okay, uh, so this was this was taken away kind of kind of quickly. Okay, it only stayed on uh, maybe a couple of years, and that was way before this whole like semantic uh, thing. Uh, but again. It's about relationships. And the crazy story here, I don't know if I have a screenshot online, but the very scary part about this, you could say, okay, it's about uh, relationships. It's about um, what... Um, <clears throat> uh, do, 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 do. Um, no, I'm not going to find it looking like this. Hold on. Let me go back to us. <laughs> yes. Uh, what I wanted to say is something very scary where the Google Wonder Wheel, yes, it's about relationship, but the thing that it was showing me, you had me as a center node, okay? And there was one link towards another nod, which was my wife. Mm-hmm. For information, my wife, if especially back then. Oh, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. What year was that in? It was it was 
2011, but that I did my talk. But look, look at look at the picture. Hold on, got yeah. it. Here is the picture. You see it? Well, tell me what it is because there is nowhere on the entire internet any citation of my wife. She was, especially back then and even today, invisible. So out of all the relationship I had with all those people who are on the web, um, why did Google link me to my wife? That's my question. Uh, well, the, the post is from... Uh, 2011 uh, so it was uh, it was before 2011 but I don't know when but they pull I, I can only tell you that the only way they pull this information is inside Gmail I, I, uh, was she on Twitter at the time no no nowhere okay. nowhere if, uh, yeah. if, like she never posted a blog a comment, never opened a profile. She was only maybe on Facebook. And that was, especially back then, Facebook was totally not letting Google crawling it. Uh, and, and I was not on Facebook. She was on Facebook. I was not. Okay. So I can, I can tell you where that probably came from. Um, so I, I sent you something in messages. It's an article that you can share the link to because it has all the research. So people know I'm not conspiracy theory and this stuff. <laughs> so um, so basically around 2011, when Google launched Google Plus, Google Plus was not a social network. Google Plus was an identity project. Mm. And it was an identity project that was worldwide. And the idea was they were going to eliminate passwords online and they were going to have people log in with an identity provider. Google Plus was an identity provider. It was one of the originators of the identity provision. Interesting thing, one of the first uh, first international meetings Google had about identity provision was in the George Orwell room in, in England, which is just kind of ironic for an identity provider. Mm -hmm. So the basic idea of identity providers was that you would have an identity provider um, and then you would log into the web through your identity provider. Your identity provider would be able to verify things about you to know that you were you and then you could log in so let's say the site wanted only people over 18 they would know you were over 18 you weren't telling them the identity provider would mm -mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, uh, mm. I, I'm sharing it. Uh, people are seeing it right now. Mm. major mm -hmm. ecosystems were involved. Um, they were called IDPEs, Identity Provider, so they forget what E stands for. And um, they thought they were solving the password problem. Now, the next part, I don't know killed it, but I think did. Snowden happened. Snowden revealed all this information, right? Mm -hmm. um, about what governments were doing and stuff like that. By the time he got his last set of large documents out, the project was defunded by the American 
federal government in Congress. It was taken down to sustenance levels. So they, all the major money was gone. Soon after that, the head of Google Plus left and Google Plus was turned into a social network. And you didn't have to use it to, to log in anymore. Mm. But when, when like SEOs talk about authorship, they get confused now because they think authors are relevant because authorship mattered back then. But authorship mattered back then because they knew who you were. They could connect you to your colleges, your writing records, your all the things that they publicly could get. They even back then had a fire host to Twitter like they do now where they could map your entire Twitter world mm. and your relationships through all of this. Right. So I, I do. I don't believe that the original idea was nefarious because passwords are a problem. That's how our federal government, you know, winds up with a backdoor implemented by Russia, right? Um, but at the same time, there's a lot of nefarious things about the project. Um, it was going to be required. You were going to use these identity providers for getting your government checks, from getting your um, anything here from your driver's license to your to your um, maybe government assistance that was going to, you're going to have to have this identity provider to do all that. The really bad part about it was there were no laws governing the identity providers and what they did with that data. So especially, especially a private company in charge of, of that. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, Estonia, which is the first country that went all digital, they have something similar, but it's the government. Okay, it's not a private company. Well, for sure, it's because of the success of Skype that Estonia uh, became what it. What, I mean, I got this this uh, <laughs> idea of becoming uh, all digital uh, and good for them. But yeah, the responsibility of these private companies, uh, and we had this talk. But again. You will see it later, even if we talked about it before today, <laughs> we had the, the, this talk before about later, <laughs> the, the, the ethical part and the fact that, uh, well, we, well, the debate about privacy is a rabbit hole. Well, the will will save, uh, for later. <laughs> let's, let's put yeah. it aside. Now let's talk about, oh, wait, just real quick. Just so you know, yeah. that Eric Schmidt is the one who said it was not a social network. Yeah, so is, he, he, we saw we saw the quote yeah. on uh, yeah. what, what he said exactly. Uh, I can say it for the people who are listening on the audio podcast. Uh, bop, 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 bop. Um, Eric Schmidt replied by saying that G Plus was built primarily as an identity service. So fundamentally, it depends on people using their real name if they're going to build future products to leverage that information. Yes. Regarding people who are concerned about their safety, he said G plus is optional. <laughs> no one is forcing you to use it. Except, except that you can get log into a single Google product without it. <laughs> So not, that's, that's optional on a technicality. So <laughs> want to use Microsoft? You want to use a word? You want to use a sheets? No. You want to use Gmail? Now you got to have G plus. So I don't know how optional that would be. Uh, Google Analytics, thanks. GFC. Yeah. Amazing uh, answer by Eric Schmidt. Okay. Okay. If you are at risk, just don't use it. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and cool. his, his famous um, analogy for that was, we don't know if the person on the other side is a dog. True. And there's a cartoon made out of that was what he said. And I don't remember exactly how he said it, but basically we don't know who's on the other side of the computer. The whole idea of this is to know who's on the other side of the computer, but there's a whole lot of things that evolve with knowing what's on the other side of the computer. So that could be bad for people like, you know, anybody who does anything on their computer, they wouldn't want their mom to see your broadcasts on the TV. Google would know about because they'd be your identity provider. And the only way, only protection you had was, uh, the ULA. Mm -hmm. That's it. So okay. if they wanted to do anything with the with your data, that they could just break the ULA. Yeah. And what are you going to do about that? So now you have all those conspiracy theories, especially going back to the beginning, the very first days of Google, where they were hanging out with people from. FBI or CIA or... Well, I mean, Matt Cutts came from the NSA, uh, but I, I don't know that I necessarily believe... No, it was... No, no, but uh, Larry Page yeah. and Sergey Brin. Um, yeah. I mean, we got 
we got a whole bunch of theories around that. That's that's the bad news of data. That's the, the surveillance that's watching over the population to to know if you are doing some bad stuff or, or not. Then let's go let's go into the positive side of profiling, of tracking. I want to talk about Google Discover, about predictive search, about Google Assistant, where you do see the positive uh, use of data, uh, and especially even for advertising. I think Larry Page, and I believe him 100%, said that uh, today we can serve you ads way better uh, way better targeted than organic uh, results. Um, the problem is often they don't have the good material. They don't have the good ads to push. But now with this whole Google Discover, which is only on mobile and especially very powerful on Android mobile, it's pushing you information, relevant information before you ask for anything. Google Assistant is solving problem for you before you ask for them. People get it, get addicted to this kind of stuff because it's yeah. very useful. I don't. I, I, I'll be honest right now. Um, disclosure: I don't use either product, any of them. I, I don't either. I, I don't yeah. have any notification. The only notifications I have on our calendar okay calendar yeah that's it i don't uh, use any mm. ai assistant i don't use also i don't think it's good for your brain to to be honest to. i i uh, i bought the first alexa and the first google home just to try them try them for like a couple of days and then they are in the drawer over there but it doesn't mean that that humanity i mean we are like special species you know we are like like uh human beings are addicted to a more comfortable, a more uh, an easiest uh, uh, way of life since the day uh, some dude made fire, another one like uh, uh, made a weapon. <laughs> the 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 evolution of the human race is going towards better comfort, better everything, uh, easier life, and and. Uh, you you know what I'm talking about because even if you are still very young, you knew the world before the internet. Yeah, uh, we yeah. are this degener this generation of people who knew the world before the internet. And I'm talking about the internet, the, not even the World Wide Web. We came, which came in the right. the the nineties. I use both. So, but yeah, definitely the World Wide Web was the big breakthrough, was the big thing. Uh, I remember in college, we, we communicated with the internet, but that, that was crap. Uh, the, the World Wide Web in the early 90s, that was the, the, really the, the, the big thing. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, have, uh, I remember one big moment when I first used Google Earth when I realized that, I mean, how many, it wasn't even DVDs back then, it was like CDs. How many CDs would you need if you wanted to have the entire planet, and, you know, on your computer and you could browse? And I used to load, I used to be working in the computer lab as my grad <laughs> assistant project in college. And we still, this was an all, this was like, coming up, it would take like 30 discs to update every computer. We, I'd sit there all night, just <laughs> next one, <laughs> like 30 discs at a time. It was crazy. But, but you know, discs and then CDs. But. Uh, and then even, um, I can like translate it. In French, we say, uh, délire de mec bourré. it's like a crazy idea from drunk people. Like, like Google Street View, okay? We're gonna take cars and we're gonna take pictures of the entire world. What? <laughs> and by the way, at the same time, we're sucking up all the IP addresses from the from everywhere we pass, so we know what's there. Then that became a problem of privacy, and they had to stop doing that. They were, I was, they supposedly. I don't know if they did, but yeah. It, 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 <laughs> 
Google uh, has now so much power that you realize that when it was out for what, like 45 minutes the other day? I mean, you are listening to this. Uh, uh, well, no, actually, you, you will be listening to this. Uh, it will be still fresh in your mind uh, because it's the first uh, Christine uh, SEO stories. But uh, the outage of the other day was a few minutes 45 minutes, but the world collapsed. The world stopped. Well, a lot of people, I mean, I don't use Google products mostly, so I was good. I actually didn't. I actually, Gmail, I mean, GS, I don't use Gmail. GSC and uh, analytics didn't go down for me, but I do know they went down for a lot of people. My advice is the only uh, way to avoid uh, the whole like tracking, profiling by Google is if you pay. For example, Google Apps, there is no tracking in there. There is no profiling. Okay, it's in the free products, and it's not very expensive. But they leave you alone. And I checked. I triple checked, and and they would. I don't think they would even consider trying to get into that kind of data of of their clients. Uh, they have enough data with the free people uh, to leave the the paying customers alone. So, or they have these like people are like, people the, call like they call them, they get mad about like the government might track me. The conspiracy theories about like the vaccine has a chip in it. Mm -hmm. People, this is your chip. Sure, <laughs> it doesn't just track where it tracks how fast you move, it tracks like it unless you have but, everything turned off. So. Did I tell you the story about my brother when he worked for uh Google Labs? Uh, I don't know. I don't no. Okay. My brother is in, lives in London and he's kind of uh, a big name in everything um, 3D, augmented reality, virtual reality. Right now, he's, uh, he's not an employee, but he's working uh, with uh, Epic Games uh, for Unreal uh, Engine. And uh, Google Labs, so Larry Page uh, toy, <laughs> They hire philosophers, uh, thinkers, artists, and he was in the mix. The brief was, what if Google has a form? And where I'm very proud of my brother is there was the Android team from Mountain View uh, in competition with the Google Labs from London. So the Android team went like, Terminator, okay, Skynet. They say we're gonna build like super robots. And my brother went in front of Larry Page and said, "Robots suck. <laughs> you, you, you will have like a, a butler." I like your brother. Okay, <laughs> he, he said, "Robots suck. All you will have is a butler. What you can do is augmented humans. We are already, or already augmented." you will get there much faster. And to make it short, matrix, chip in the brain, uh, that's, no, no. that's that's where, uh, I know I know you say no, but just, and, 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 um, you say, ahead, I remember we spoke about this uh, and, and you said, no, no, because of America, we come from a press. Once something becomes socially acceptable. I don't believe it'll ever become socially acceptable. Well, We'll talk about not it. In, not, not in our lifetime. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a, in a few years and not so far ahead. But You'll the other see. thing, too, is it doesn't, it, it, people will tell me the reasons why they think it's cool. And they're like, well, I'll know French. I'll know how to do this. And I'm like, you don't know anything. All you do is have information like you do if you search it now. You don't know anything. No, you have it, information it, retrieval. It, it's a very different thing. It's like I could look right now how to fly a plane on Google. Yeah, but doesn't mean like, I know how to fly a plane. It doesn't matter. It's, it seems real. Ninety nine percent, ninety nine point eight percent seems real. So why no, do what, you need? What I'm trying to say is that it doesn't make anything better. It's just now it's in your brain. As oh, opposed to I don't advocate it. Okay, I, I don't say it's good. Yeah. I'm just yeah, telling yeah. you where it's going. That's it. Right. <laughs> well, that's. But remember, driverless that, that's, cars. Are no, no, to I, I'm, I'm telling you right from. I'm telling you from my brother working sure. for Google Labs, I'm sure, for Larry I'm Page, sure and the brief sure was, do. what if Google has a form? What if Here. Google is all around us? Let's put it this way. 
Well, one, one, there's something I want to mention. I keep forgetting it after that, but um, I live in a country where, where people won't wear a mask. Won't wear a mask. I right? know, but it, it, it's, so, it's... So if they're not going to wear a mask, they're not letting you do surgery on their head to put a chip in there. And you, unless you can get those people to agree... You sure, the, sure the sure the Larry Pages of the world and the people who live in that that environment, they'll do it. But most people will be like, Heck okay. No, so no so so you're saying that one day, if if we go back even 20 years, if I told you you will have a device that will follow you follow you everywhere, like someone your, actually did uh, write that, like in your bed, like uh, uh, in, in the in the toilet. You would not believe it. You would say yep. that's not socially acceptable. Omni Magazine had a writer who wrote many, so, many years so ago that, you, that it, you'd have a yeah. phone that would follow you around. He thought it would yeah. come to, he didn't realize it'd be this, but he thought it would be it, it, It's uh, um, uh, industrial designer called uh, Raymond, Raymond Lowy uh, from the 30s who said something needs to be revolutionary, but socially acceptable. Yes. And of course, old folks, but the youngsters, I don't think they care. Uh, Actually, I, yeah, I had a conversation with a friend a few years back about how the youngsters wouldn't care about privacy because they're growing up with all this stuff. The funny thing is recent studies show they actually care more about privacy than people. No, 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 no it's them. not about that. It's making, uh, you, it's, it's making your life easier, okay? Right, you, you, but you, 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 you will be, privacy first. No, no, you will be streaming 24-7. And they have a very simple way to respect privacy. I know it. I know the technology uh, because I've worked with Quant.com, a search engine that respects your privacy. Uh, the technology is called Ghost. It's very simple. Very, very simple. You but know Google what? Google wouldn't be making a chip no. to not have data. No, no. You know what? You know what? Everything that is in regards to your private data stays on the device. Which is it, great. But I'm just saying Google doesn't do that. Nor will they do that. There is a solution. It exists. There is a solution. Of course there's it, one. It, it, it works. I mean, data is like gold now. Data is... That yeah. is better than owning gold bars, right? It sells for more. And it's pretty funny when Facebook is attacking Apple for uh, uh, killing the freedom on the web because they won't I think allow that diversion. Diversion. Be, be, because oh because, because they, they don't want any more of the, the Google tracking, uh, the Facebook tracking. Well, anyways. Well, there was uh, a real, real quick on that line, there was an article that came out this week because I keep forgetting to mention it and I can't find it right now. So mm -hmm. I'll try to send it to you later. Um, where um, there's a secret pact between Google and Facebook and the antitrust and investigation that they're doing that may be the basis of the antitrust, where uh, Google what's and up? Facebook agreed not to compete in different advertising markets. But that's not the point of the article oh. I want to bring up. Um, it was like they found documents that Google intended to Im basically imprison people on Google and only use Google for everything. Like you said, Google around, but also just Google. So things like featured snippets, paywall, mm. keep people on Google, not going to your websites, right? And uh, the new passages, keep people on Google. It's like, it, it feels like the two are related. I haven't read the article yet, so I, I don't, that's my plan mm. later today. So I have to look at it more. But um, what you're saying also depends on a lot of that. And I, I, um, I just think that uh, Google has... The antitrust is going to determine a lot of this because apparently in the documents they're finding things that actually give a good case for antitrust. We we debriefed the big tech hearing and we will talk about it again. Uh, the lawsuits are out. It's a first step. And I remember you were very disappointed by the fact that DOJ didn't do a very good job at figure it shit out okay <laughs> like understanding well, what's going on pretty bad <laughs> well 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 they weren't the one doing the 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 um, ah detective work okay <laughs> it was doj yeah. right so so the whole one year uh, research and then the congress okay but anyway it's a first step it was done the last time was it was in 2013 microsoft got uh, dismantled uh, but that was 
easy. Now it's the first step. So it's very important. It's a good first step. And that's all the help we have. We have nothing else because that's not those fines that the European community is slapping uh, the, the Google and all with. I mean, 40 million or 100 million fine. Come on, like that, that, that's 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 like a tip oh, for those we guys. Like, on ads in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, really, really, you want to find them like a hundred millions? Like, okay, whatever. What's <laughs> what's a little bit funnier is um, I think they gave them ninety days to hand out the algorithms. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah. now, if you want to build a search engine, you have one. It's called quant.com. You go on GitHub. You have all the algorithms. Now, you don't have a user manual. And the thing that you don't have is the cursor. How, how do they, you know, uh, pull the cursors more or less and how they... Uh, tweak the algorithms but building a search engine yeah it's pretty much uh, 90% out there shared by quant.com and, and you can find the rest elsewhere so building a search engine um, today it, it's feasible the only problem is to catch up on the Google index and because the web is so big and it's going so fast that it's basically impossible to catch up. And now let's move on to the next step. We did rank brain, did we? we yeah, rank basically yeah. rank brain, okay. Google's confused, mm. weak relationships, yeah. back everything. So, so, so now um, I said that the May core update, the thing that nobody said is about that smell of the backlinks that I saw the big increase, like huge increase on queries that I analyze for the past like 15 years and, and I do, do see all the backlinks are aligned on the same the topical trust flow. Now for this update, well, before I go into the conspiracy, the, the tinfoil hat thing, what's your view on the change of mindset about those core updates compared to, I, th I feel like SEOs still think it's like 2012 with big shifts like Panda, Penguin, like like Florida. Like, oh, they can't be. They can't uh, be. They can't be that devastating. Just one real quick thing, though. I don't think that links are related to the core updates. What I think is happening is Penguin only runs every three to four months. Core updates run every three to four months. I think they're running near each other. And so they can appear well, like what's left of links. What's, what's left? Of, what's left of Penguin? Really? Well, but, Pe but Penguin is an algorithm in the core algorithms that runs separately. No, like, like there's nothing left of of the filter compared no, to no, Panda. No, no, not, it's not the filter. It's basically how they did. No, links what I'm them. saying is compared to Panda, where there's a okay. lot into no, the I core agree. algorithm. What is left of the manual filter? Okay, a red flag on the optimized uh, encore text of backlinks. No, and I, I agree, but they said uh, that they, when they, they moved it to the core, they said they were getting rid of all that. So there's not much it, left. Yeah, but but it does work like it used to before mm -hmm. Penguin, and that is it devalues links. True. When it knows a link is bad, and that's all it does, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But the point being is, a lot of people I've seen questioning whether links are related to core updates, and I'm saying I don't think so. I think it's just Penguin is gathering the links and running about the same time it, as a core update. It. So it looks like at the same time when you got all those links devalued because they weren't good from Penguin that it looks like it's the core mm. update and it's not, it's the Penguin update. So, um, but the core updates, the problem with the core updates is, and the information that's out there is there's a lot of speculating on things about chasing algorithm stuff, right? And that happens with every update. The problem is we have core updates so frequently, it happens more frequently. So, you know, when a big update comes out, there's all people come up with these theories based on chasing algorithms. Core updates, core ranking factors. Core updates are they're trying to tweak the core ranking factors and ranking signals to get better websites to show up, especially on your money, your life queries. So when a core update rolls through, the three things I do now after experiencing quite a few of them, check for query shifting that the queries haven't shifted. That's the first thing, because if your queries are shifted, then, hey, just write new content to the queries that you had, and you'll be good. Um, 
and then where the query shifted because sometimes that indicates a technical issue. So on one site, they shifted on 800 items that were in two subfolders. I ran a crawler of the two subfolders and found out they had the 800 redirect loops and they all had a page speed module from Google that was six years old and not updated anymore and the pages were taking a minute to load. So fix those two things, next core update comes through, mm. but boom, they get 100% of the traffic back. The other reason you know the core updates are on core ranking signals is in every other update Google's ever done like this, you have to wait for the next one to roll through. Mm. This one's like, you can get some improvement in between, but you probably still need the big one to get everything back. It's because they're core ranking signals and they tweak those all the time. So during that break between the three and four months between when they run, the, they may tweak some core ranking signals and so you get some boost, but you don't get the big boost until the next one runs. So I look at query shifting for query shifting. So you lost traffic just because of query shifts. I look at query shifting to see if there might be a technical issue on the website crawl the website and I look at technical issues first, page speed especially. Page speed has been proven in every site I've recovered, but one page speed has been an issue and fixing page speed fixed or was a big part of fixing that website. And then, um, and not core web vitals only, that's Google's new standardization model for page speed. This is just everything on that causes the page to load slowly, um, except possibly like ads and stuff, you still have to fix those, but they don't judge those as harshly in the page load. Um, and then uh, the third one would be um, uh, uh, to, 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 to quality, just general site quality, site architecture. Mm. Like one site, I couldn't find anything wrong except their site architecture. Mm. They didn't really have one. So we know what does Google want. We know we know the end game. Uh, fair, not fair. How did they value what is quality or not? Again, it's not human being. You like blue, I like black. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's there's no nuance. It's a it's a dry uh, machine learning algorithm that makes decisions, and the 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 problem I'm having two things. One, if it's not told on Twitter by Danny Sullivan through the Google search liaison account and the blog post saying it's a core update. Be careful not to confuse with what's called machine learning patterns, which yeah. is those peaks, a data set goes wild. It's made for that. They throw it out and they tweak it. Uh, that's not on a core update. That's not an update. That's just the way machine learning works. So core updates need to be announced by Google. If it's not, if it's only some SEOs naming something because it's moving a lot in the SERPs uh, weather websites like the, the <laughs> no, 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 be careful, be careful. That's uh, um, now when you, <clears throat> when you look uh, at the way things are going, what does Google want? Going from those 10 blue links to what I call the Christmas tree. And we have a bubbly uh, bouquet behind us uh, because the Christmas tree with the knowledge graph, the people also ask, the answers, the, the, the videos, okay? All these multimedia, all those, uh, all those um, results answering different intent, very important different intent. That's what Google wants. Obviously, not all queries can look like that because it doesn't have enough material and the intent. These headphones are bugging me out. I just bought them because I'm supposed to have like a non-sliding little thing in the ear, but it's just, they, 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 don't, they don't want to stay in. That's okay. okay. I, anyway. That's why I hate your <laughs> no, I was going to say, um, I meant also with query shifting, query relevance is really important. But, uh, yeah. No, but what, what I'm saying is now those, those core updates only consolidate what you think, what I think. Our way of doing SEO is only getting better, meaning everything that Google is going towards uh, just proves that I'm right. You are right. Some of us saw it soon enough the way um, it's going and what does Google want? How and what 
to give Google first the technical aspect. Uh, <laughs> I always say it's the most um, ingrat. How do you say ingrat in, uh, in, in English? Hold, hold on. Google, <laughs> help me. <laughs> See, if I, if I had like a, like a Google uh, uh, ingrat, ingrat, anglais. The technical CEO, ungrateful, okay? Out of every, all the SEO uh, skills and SEO actions, Technical SEO, your specialty is the most ungrateful one. Why? Because you only get downgraded. Like, like, like if you are good, you are doing your job and you, you won't get uh, brownie points uh, if, you pay, if you load in four seconds and you go from four to two, it, it won't improve your ranking. If you load it, if you load in 15, you will be downgraded. Once you are good, uh, it's doing your job, and that's SEO is not played with that part of the triptych content links technical. Technical is very ungrateful because it's very costly, very necessary. You need to pay attention nonstop, um, but it's an empty shell. Well, the first thing, well, no, I wouldn't say it's an empty shell, but the first well, thing. Well, if you got no contents and no links, what is your website good or good for? If Google can't crawl your website and index it, then what is no, your content? No, okay, you got, you got the fastest website in the world. But, I am not arguing that you don't. But need it's content. only but, it's only duplicate content from other websites. What's the value of this? Every news publisher will tell you that actually sites can rank for their own duplicate content. You, you're talking about websites that have a lot of page rank, a lot of backlinks. A, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, you're uh, going down the wrong path here. No, 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 no. I'm talking. I'm talking about an empty shell. You have because you you try you 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 always go very defensive on technical SEO because people because you 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 are talking to people who don't understand. I understand the value of technical SEO. I'm talking about in core updates, technical SEO what, is very. What, what I'm saying is, you don't get brownie points for doing your job. You only get bad points. You only get problems with technical SEO if you are not good. If you are doing your job, if your website is great, again, it's an empty shell. It has no content and no backlinks. Uh, it could be the fastest website in the world. It's not a website. If it has no content and backlinks, it's not a website. Yes, it is. No, it's not. A website is not a website if it doesn't have content on it. Yeah, but it, I'm, I'm saying what's the purpose? What's the purpose? You're, 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 you're trying. You're trying to defend yeah. something that you can defend. Meaning, you're trying to give value to technical SEO beyond what it is. It's not. No. It's there's nothing magic about technical SEO. Look it's at, look at your, only look your, bad. Look in your, look in your your the image I sent you. It's on, no, but technical SEO is only bad. Meaning. Look, it, that's true. I didn't say you get. It, it's Why? you can only have problems. Go, look at the link, the image I sent you. Uh, yeah, but bit. again, that's someone who was bad. Right, but so is everything. If you're bad, if your content is thin, so you so it. so, so you prove my so. you prove my point. Well, what do you get? What do you get credit for? You don't get. What I'm, what I'm saying anyway. is. Technical SEO is the most ungrateful task because it's not because you fix people who do a bad job and you get rewards for that. If let's imagine that everybody can do a website with the core vital or whatever and fast and all that stuff. Okay. Perfect, uh, perfect technically, uh, accessible website everybody has a good website you are out of a job okay christine you, you no, can't fi do other seo <laughs> you, ca you can't fix any more websites they're all good it's all fixing nothing you do in seo is not fixing 
No, I'm Everything saying in theory, if, if, if all the websites were good. But well, you would be out of a job too, because it's all fixing. No, because uh, I, I would adapt. We are good SEOs. We don't die. We adapt. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I would just, I would just. But, but you are not I'm understanding sure my I'm point, not. which is, uh, I'm not saying that uh, technical SEO is not necessary. I'm taking, I'm saying it's just to point the coin in the machine to give you the right to play the game where people, right. where people put way and the fact that people are waking up at the end of 2020 about those core web virals come on guys august 2009 caffeine that's when it started and that's, page speed was, 2011 was announced as a rank as a signal ranking factor but 2009 august yeah. 2009 is when you should have started to look at uh, the, building good websites. Yes, and, the point the point of technical is like anything in SEO. You're optimizing to be more of what Google wants. So everything is optimization for poorer to better. There is no better than what Google wants, right? There's what Google wants. But on technical, if I can't, if Google can't easily get through your site and rank it and index and all that and understand it, unless you're a big brand with a lot of links and tons of content, you have to fix that technical because you won't get the you won't get the attention that you need from Google because they're not going to waste their time crawling site that takes five minutes to load or two minutes uh, to load. Every so, every single press website I I audit as uh, most of the content not even indexed. Why? Because it's not linked. It doesn't right want exactly, to and that's part of technical links. right and turning yeah. linking structures, but link too. But no one is saying. I never said ever, you went on that rant, like I said this, I did not say it. I never said you don't need links and content. Of course you need links and good content. The point is, if you don't have a site that's easily crawlable, indexable, Google may not understand it as well. It may not index certain portions of it. And in the core updates, what it's doing is sites that had technical issues for years suddenly got dinged for them because Google didn't mm. care. Google let them be. They had very low, they had not amped it up on them. I have not worked on a core update recovery yet that didn't have technical issues. And I have recovered multiple sites with just fixing mm. technical issues. And that goes back to the original theory where we said that Google is using so many resources to crawl the web. I think part of this might be is Google is trying to reduce its resources. So it is dinging now sites that it didn't used to care about because they were your money, your mm. life, but really good. Right. Because they're written really well, because they're about important topics, because they had like, you know, doctors as authors. Um, they didn't ding them for the technical. And now they are dinging them for the technical. OK, now I'm putting my tinfoil hat on because uh, I don't recall anybody talking about this. Um, IMO, in my opinion, no proof, no nothing. Uh, what do you think about my theory that Okay, let's explain people. First, you see the first step, which is Google discovers your page. You could see it in if you have the logs, search console, uh, whatever. You see the discovery of the URL. And then you see the last step, which is the page goes up in an interface like the search engine result page. So we see the first step. And the last step, we don't see anything that goes in between. In my uh, career of uh, great spam indexer, <laughs> I was never able not to index something. Okay, I was never. I was always able to index whatever I wanted. That's also why I'm laughing out loud at this. This. Uh, tool in the search console that everybody's happy is back. If you really need that to index a new URL, okay. Maybe in some cases it's useful. I don't deny oh, it, but publishers love it because I can get their article out before. Yeah, but like, come on, come on, come on, guys. Like, like, yeah. like, uh, if that's, that's silly to, uh, again, I'm not saying it's not useful in certain cases, but so much fuss and so much, uh, <laughs> There was a lot of way too much noise about about this feature. But anyway, my point is that, in my opinion, what Google is trying to do, and I spoke to a couple of 
PhDs who said, yeah, they've been working on that for a bunch of years, but it's not working yet. Okay, discovery of the page, then crawl of the page, then uh, indexing, calculus of page rank, anti-spam, relevancy, blah, 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 all those steps until the last step. That cost huge amounts of money yeah. knowing the official number from 2016 is 25 billion uh, spammy pages and 90 billion spammy links, but we're more talking about the, the pages here. Um, let's imagine that they discover a page, they call the page, and they decide not to index the page. Sure. Every site has tons of non-index pages, by the way. Yes, because they suck. But again, I was never able not to index a page. <laughs> and whatever crap I gave Google, it swallowed it. It and then it did the calculation and then it threw it out. You know what but I'm saying? How is the mobile version? I, I, I indexed it. That was but before how, that was before mobile. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, that was, what was No, no, I mean now if it's not indexing, how is the mobile version? If it's not indexing, how is the mobile? Yeah, because Google's only doing new sites as mobile first. So if the mobile version doesn't have everything on it, then it would not do it. That's that's my next point. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. So so if if we follow my theory that uh, we can't, like I used to be able to feed anything I wanted to Google, then it's an amazing news for people because... Uh, for people especially like me, because we know where is the sh threshold for crap, you know? <laughs> so, okay, below this level of crap, you won't get indexed. So I know we know the minimum level of crap that Google wants. And now, going to your point about uh, the mobile, um, there's two, two levels here. There's the mobile version of Google, uh, we know the computer uh, version of Google, and there is the Google Discover, that part of search. I think they're struggling with uh, the mobile version of the index, especially because of the fact that the web is so big and going so fast and there is so much crap. Uh, I think that if especially people don't realize that, for example, they used to put the big block of content at the bottom of their categories uh, or product pages for SEOs, for SEO. And guess what? They remove re they remove that for the mobile version because it doesn't look good. Well, obviously, <laughs> your no. SEO is not gonna work. <laughs> you, yeah. you get well, a big... Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. I'm saying I'm, I'm saying mobile. What I did is I'm on markets that are not mobile first. Like Southeast Asia, it's mobile only. What I did is I forgot everything I knew. Everything. I started from scratch. I looked at this device and I say, okay, how do I, how do I become visible inside this device? And my solution is way, way, way far away from everything I knew from doing SEO on Google, the computer version. Meaning to be visible on mobile, eh, eh, everything is outdated. All the information we have now, the mindset is different because the way I look at it is how do I make it impossible for someone, whatever the device, whatever the format, so text, video, image, audio, mobile, tablet, uh, uh, voice, computer, whatever, uh, Reddit, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I want, if you are interested in my topic, I want to go in front of your eyes and throughout your ears multiple times throughout the day, throughout the week. Yeah. That's how I do things. SEO conspiracy is built on that model, model right. where around the topic, uh, you know how I work and I, I, I uh, invade the, the space around the topic. 
that's the only solution I found to start from scratch. Because if I focused on trying to adapt to the mobile version of Google, come on, people don't spend their day on Google on the well, on, yeah. on smartphone. I think we have two different things out here that are kind of getting conflated it, as one. Exactly. So yeah. Mobile first just is mobile first ranking. So Google has moved all new sites to the mobile first only signals, which means that everything that ranks your website has to be on the mobile. Now, most people do respond, uh, you know, responsive design. So everything is on the mobile, except some people, like you said, remove content on mobile to make it look prettier. Well, then that content will not be read or indexed by Google. So if, or if you're not showing it in the HTML, if you're using like JavaScript clicks to show things, you're not gonna probably find that content or find it well. So if you want content to be ranked, it's an index, it's gotta be on the mobile version. When the other part you're talking about is moving to a mobile world, which is mm. just different and you're right. Yes, you do need to be everywhere and your presence needs to be larger. And also Google looks at those signals as well. So there's like social proof, right? Google doesn't use Twitter links to rank your site, but Google does notice if a brand has a Twitter, active Twitter account and an active, because one of the ways you can get rid of spam is not saying you, but a lot of spammers I know it's, they don't want to work really hard on making all these presences. They want to do their website. They want to make their money, right? They'll make 50 websites. I'm not saying they don't work hard, but I'm just saying that they don't want to put all the time into the signals. And so Google looks at signals that uh, someone who's a spammer might not be caring about. They're not going to put a Twitter presence that's active. They're not going to put a Instagram account that's active, right? They, they look at those things. And that's why Twitter has a fire hose to Google. Google can see everything on Twitter and the activity on Twitter. Um, so there's things, signals that they look at that aren't necessarily ranking factors, but they're signals that a site is not spam. So like you're saying, getting on video and doing all these mm. things is really important because that shows Google that you're, you know, an active, you know, company, business person, whatever mm. that's out there and, and doing work and you're, you're there and they know you're probably not spam off the get go. It's just, I, I, the only solution I found, especially if I want to work on, on three things, authority, notoriety and popularity um, i didn't say eat okay oh That's... please yeah <laughs> we should talk about that briefly though. yeah but but my thing is my my traffic pie needs to be divided yeah. in three thirds where yes. one third is search engine one third is referrals and one third is about branding but yeah. can i submit my list of seo 2010 versus seo 2020 sure okay <laughs> Before SEO 2010 keywords, SEO 2020 slash Google Discover entities, topic, query, clusters. I call them query terms is what I call. So instead of keywords, call them entities, queries, topics, silos, clusters, ideas, concept. Before we had search volume. Now it's about being relevant. It's about user intent. I'm not saying the SEO 2010 is dead. Keywords are still important, but we need to move beyond that. Okay. Well, yeah, keywords are like the basis for query terms, yeah. right? Yeah. Keywords are entities, and then query terms mm. are how you phrase yeah. that and how you. Exactly. I'm not yeah. saying search volume is dead. I'm saying relevancy and user intent is yeah. is uh, more important than just and then keyword research now it's audience segmentation customer journey uh by your personal all that stuff and well, what you can look at is everything you're saying is a subcategory of a broader category now because there's more things involved so like keywords are the only thing context user intent, and then, yeah so yeah and volume and, is yeah and the last one the most controversial remember I'm talking about Google Discover. So whatever is happening on mobile and especially Android mobile. SEO 2010 was about backlinks. Now it's about engagement. S those signals. And well, especially on Google Discover, yeah, not Google. <laughs> so, so we don't want to enhance that myth. Engagement, no, but the, the dark social, 80% of uh, sharing. Yes, 
is I just wanted to clarify we weren't saying if you click on something on Google a bunch of times that you're gonna No 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 I'm talking about engagement. I'm talking about yeah. its agitation. In it yeah. there needs to be something happening around your content. It's not exactly. just about clicking. It, it's yeah. about the whole thing. It's about sharing, exactly. it's about the light. It's it, and it could be it could be bought out if you buy with ads and 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 you do enough of this agitation in the chemical sense, you know, you stir your soup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's what uh, I'm talking about when I say engagement. So now, when I say that everything is outdated, is um, it's a little bit like <laughs> it's a little bit like everybody is turning into Neil Patel, meaning <laughs> you 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 have a big. Such you, a resurgence lately too. Oh my gosh! No, but you have like a great big title, like big uh, the the seven secrets for advanced SEO 2021. And then you read the stuff and you're like, okay, that's the same stuff that I read ten years ago. Well, I I, I think that we we need to rethink search as a whole. Um, websites are not dead. Uh, publishing text on web pages is not dead. You will not go out of business anytime soon with technical SEO because the web is such a mess and the websites are so badly made that uh, it's a never ending story. However, if I want to open up the scope of things, I think search with a cap capital S, uh, I would love it to be like 2004, you know, 100% free traffic from Google, because that was really free back then, then a keyword, then a page, then a CTR, and then money, free Google keyword, page, CTR, money, that was simple, that was easy. Now it's a busy world. Now it's a complicated world. And I'm afraid that too many SEOs are still focused on producing text that they host on web pages that they uh, uh, you know, promote uh, throughout the website. And I, I looked at uh, my friends, uh, French uh, SEOs on Instagram. And I was, okay, how old is Instagram? And you guys didn't even care. So I'm not even talking about TikTok. I'm not even talking about YouTube. Like how many SEOs are really taking YouTube seriously? Not that many, you know? Uh, it feels like it feels like we, we are at a shift now where um, the world is changing and SEOs, we refuse to, or we, we are holding on to the past because, because we, we don't want to solve the problem to crack this black box, which is called a smartphone, because that's way complicated. Okay. If I compared the results from what I did uh, on the Southeast Asia on mobile only markets. If I compare those results to what I used to do 10 years ago, I quit. I don't do it. You can't compare. But, but don't you feel that there is a, there is a need to, um, for, for SEOs to see search as, as a more like a first, first step is multimedia. Even if you only do Google SEO, why only text? Why not around the topic like I do? Images, text, video, audio. I think that's also restricted a lot by clients, right? Because clients, I, I've tried pitched often to like add this to add video or add. They don't have the resources, they're not interested in the CEO, doesn't think it's worthy. So I think the restrictions are a lot on that. I do think though there also is an issue with a lot of SEO, as you were saying, who just think it's, you know, write good content, get some links and you're done. And because of the move into AI and machine learning, it's much more complicated than that now. I always equate it to like changing the oil on my car. When I was in college, I changed the oil on my car. It was simple, right? But I, I'm not, 
now it's not simple, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. now if I want to change the, if I want to just change the distributor cap on my car, whatever it's called now, I don't think it's a distributor cap. You have to move the engine. It cost me $300 for them to do it. I'm like, all you have to do is change the spark plugs out. They're like, they, they, but I, don't, they don't fix cars. They just change the parts anyway. Yeah, they don't fix them. Saying, <laughs> but, but to get yeah. to it, it's uh, uh, like, big charge because now it's under all these really complicated now right so the point just being is that search has not has not devolved it's not less it's just evolved into the point where it's much more complex there's a lot more signals there's a lot more to it and so it's like being a, a great baker or a great chef you add subtleties mm -hmm. that make it an amazing dish as opposed to just you know i guess you get at the Applebee's down the street, you know, they both have steak and they both have sauce, but once you'll pay a hundred dollars for it and one you'll pay $20 for it. There's all these but, subtleties. There's all these little things that make it different. And I think that Matt cut said it best back in the day when he called it search experience optimization. True. True. I remember that. I think, and yeah. I, I've always gone from that ever since he said that, because it's about user experience, not just, and, and Google's algorithms have evolved like that. Originally they were about spam. Then they were about usability and and now they're about quality and, and that's how they've changed yeah it's funny that people are, are freaking out about usability now when was the the page layout <laughs> update oh my gosh <laughs> that was yeah like, like 15 years <laughs> ago or something anyway I, I, and i have SEOs <laughs> argue with me in groups that page speed doesn't matter it doesn't do anything and i'm like it's been in the algorithm since 2011 i think it is it, it they you think they just put it there for fun like you you have a, you have a, a very valid point also uh, when when you explain that um, SEO doesn't have to be complicated that a lot of people are uh, trying to make it uh, still this like secret sauce you are one of the few who spend and the article I show is one of those example of. Um, not so many people are able to write a complete guide about rank brain based on facts, not on just thin air like other people who invent uh, stuff like LSI keywords or whatever. So, so to to make the if effort to uh, take your time. And now you're doing it in video. Welcome to the new century, Christine. You don't do the written <laughs> word anymore. It's all it's all happening on video. <laughs> um, it, it's remarkable. And I feel like you, you have those two sides that collide where those SEOs that I want to be the um, les sachants, you know, the people who know and, and uh, we need to keep it this way. Well, and, and we try to make it seem very complicated. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because search will always win. And you open my eyes on something very important. But first, search will always win out of any acquisition pipeline you want to because of intent. Because when people search, the mindset is totally different than if you are in the inbox or on Facebook or whatever. But second of all, um, I remember talking to you about the standards, about having standards, and you say, are you crazy? Did you really want like some SEO uh, reporting in front of Congress when they spoke about Google? In the 451 pages of the report, they talk about crawling, they talk about indexing, Google dominates the world. Google is the master of the world. Guess who dominates Google? We do. And nobody knows right. who we are. We are invisible. <laughs> we don't They're exist. Like it that way. Yes, yes. So no one's regulating us because they don't know. <laughs> so so you changed my mind on that. I'm saying Yes, standard standardize it when I'm gone. Okay, <laughs> do the standards and all that stuff. Uh, wait, 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 like ten or twenty years. Uh, leave it yeah, alone. But, but we joked around the years ago at an SES conference. We were running down the street, going, "We control the internet." And someone like another SEO walked up on us and they're like, "That's really arrogant." We go, "No, we don't mean we really control the internet, but nobody goes past page one, and we put the stuff on page one." So. In a way, we control the internet. We can no. I, yeah. I can say it. I'm not afraid. Uh, we control Google and con 
Google controls the world, but the best part is nobody knows we exist. We can <laughs> manipulate the information. We can um, pretty much clean up or destroy a reputation. We can push whatever content. So whatever is on that content is up to us. And there's basically only one thing stopping us is something called a moral compass. Uh, especially what you call the ass hat, the yeah. ones who put their company in danger, who put their employees at risk uh, because they are doing stuff without knowing the consequences or the risks. Yeah. And, and that, was, that was one of my articles, by the way, that mm. you'll find on Web Archive was the ass hat one. Oh. It's a remarkable article because uh, this whole white hat, black hat, uh, it's a nonsense. The ass hat, yeah, the ass hat needs to disappear. And uh, if you know some of these people, do everything you can to stop them because they are dangerous. If you know the risks, the Google guidelines are not the law. If you break the law, you're doing hacking. Uh, if you do spam indexing, that's not against the law. Yeah, and, and I always just say that the difference is, um, some people go, well, I told the client. And it's like, but the client doesn't understand what a Google devaluation is. They don't understand that 90% of their traffic can be gone overnight. So if somebody's paycheck is riding on what you're doing on their website, don't do it on that website. Build a second site, build a third site, build a fourth site, do build, you know, feeder sites. But but don't risk people's jobs based on what you do in SEO. That shouldn't that shouldn't be a thing. Um, because if I'm working for a big company and I get them a devaluation that takes 30, 40% of their traffic away, people will lose their jobs in the next quarter because they will that's the first place they go, right? First place they go when the sales go down is to take the jobs away from people. But if you're just doing black hat to make yourself some money, do it on every site you own. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Or if you have to make money for somebody quickly, like if someone came to me in September and said, we have to rank for Christmas, you're not going to rank for Christmas. But I can send you to a black hat person who can build you sites that will get you money into your stores for Christmas. And then we'll work on your SEO next year. And I have told clients that it's just a tool. The, the ASAP part is when you risk people's jobs. And if you're doing it without telling people or if you're doing it where you know the devaluation could kill the company and the, and mm -hmm. even if you tell the client that, they don't really understand that that really can happen overnight. That You literally can look at your analytics today and wake up in the morning and have a 90% traffic loss that's going to stay there for a really long time. You know, if, if, you're, if you're hit like that on Penguin, you had to wait two years on the last Penguin. Two was, years. To that get was your crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was insane, and and that's how much. And we spoke about the fact that they launched that core update in the middle of the pandemic. I'm no engineer, and maybe it's impossible to stop the the machine. But still, uh, the the effect, and even the effects, the the side effects of this core update of December 2020 with those mom and pops type of websites, that's the issue here, is that Google does, doesn't care for these people who depend on the, what I hate about this Google propaganda, and they are paying ads right now to claim, and the whole discord, the whole uh, talk with uh, Mr. Pichai in front of Congress was, we help billions of businesses or small businesses to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, if you didn't exist, they would have figured out anyway, okay, how to make money. That's how life works. But now you are trying to paint the picture of you are the saver of all the small businesses, but on the other side, you put them up and then overnight, you take it away with no explanation, no nothing. And these people are like, we bet everything on you and now we have nothing. Uh, yeah. And even worse now. Okay. So I'm working with this client. They're not a big client. They're not a small client. They're kind of in between who did these pages that outline every piece of a computer and, and how it can be. A, a, and I don't mean like building one. I mean like how malware can affect it, how, oh. 
virus can affect it, how the DLs work, right? And in a lot of those, they have instructions on how to access it, which are very similar, the instructions, because all you're saying is, go here, now find this file. Go here, find this file. A lot of them are in the same folders, whatever. They got a 90% decrease devaluation for thin content. They don't have thin content, right? They have content that's valuable to the user. They give us no links in the manual actions anymore. So we don't know what pages they're looking at. They give us nothing. And when you get it back, it doesn't say, uh, uh, this one said rejected, but on another client I'm working with, it doesn't say it revoked the manual action. Mm. It says revoked or adjusted with mm. no links. So was it revoked? Is it adjusted? Oh, I got to wait for the manual action viewer for a week to see if it was revoked. And if it was adjusted, what did you adjust? Because you, this, this one client says it's on all pages. It was on all pages before. So if it was adjusted, what was adjusted? They give you literally zero information now on manual actions. And I think that's a problem because if you're gonna take a business and take away their traffic for something like the instructions, cause I had to do a site audit on 3 million pages to find the common content and it wasn't duplicate, it was similar. Mm. But it was just these instructions that were hidden behind tabs. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. They, 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 if they gave me a few URLs, I could have gone, oh, I see exactly the problem. Let's get to work on that. Now we're two rejections in. Not the first one wasn't me. The second one was because we didn't find this content. Um, and now we're going to submit again and hopefully mm. that'll do it. But I have no way to appeal it. There's mm -hmm. no one to go to. There's mm -hmm. no one to talk to. They say go to the forums. The forums are completely non-helpful. Plus they want you to... Um, give the name of the company, which for most of the time you can't because you're under NDA, nor does a company want to be in a forum about their problems. That's bad for, comp you know, competitor could find that. So so I think that the the lack of information on manual action, especially after what you just said, that people are relying on this traffic and usually they haven't, especially with quality updates, haven't done anything wrong. Exactly. They haven't violated the terms of service. Originally yeah. the terms of service were to catch spammers. Now it's like, oh, your site's not perfect. Let's take away 50% of your traffic or 90. We have redirect loops on 800 mm. pages. So let's take away 70% of your traffic. That's not, to me, we're gonna get into fair, but that's not fair. And when Penguin took two years to update, I wrote an article about the ethics of Google. And we're at the point now where I feel like there's almost a second article that needs to be written about if you're going to, um, provide this space and people go, well, you know, Google does it for free. No, they don't. They do it because that's how they sell ads. If they didn't have the organic results. They wouldn't sell any ads. So there's a mutual relationship here, but it has to be mutual. And Google is not mutual anymore. Um, and there's other reasons it's not mutual, but one of them is in the manual actions where they take away so much traffic. They don't give you any information on why they took it away. Furthermore, <clears throat> they have those community managers uh, called uh, search trend analyst or something <laughs> uh, who only play firemen okay they um, they help you they say some stuff if you have a problem but when it comes to help people achieve results again there's this big lie about links uh, I, th I think it's time to lay off. Okay, Google, like, like that's it. You won the battle. People are so scared of backlinks. You, you can stop saying that. The only problem is, it's true that the top of the top of the pyramid of content producers can get organic reach, whatever they say, the top 1% or maybe top 0.1% of content producer can say whatever they want, people will pay attention. But it's not true for the rest of the people. And this is where uh, I think sometimes it's time to know when to quit and to stop the lie. And today is the day where uh, Google, because, because every single SEO does it, but the like SEO in the know, okay, who know that backlinks work. <laughs> uh, but the, the rest of the, the, the people, they, they, they are so afraid, they are so scared, they, they don't do it. And of course, they don't achieve results because, uh, because they need the links. Uh, one way or another, you need to promote uh, your content. If you don't promote your content, if you don't buy the link, if you don't build a scenario, a framework to get the link, 
it won't happen. Uh, it just won't. You know, just, I can have a site now. This is a few years ago, but links haven't really changed that much except for the way Penguin was applied. Um, who refused to do any link acquisition. Now, I don't ever buy links or any of that, but I have worked with um, partners in link building who are able to create scenarios where people will link to the site, do a podcast or do an event in a town or whatever it happens to be. So um, technically that's again, so I always say there's no white hat link builders, everyone's gray hat, but it's it's not black hat, it's not, pay, no one's getting paid for the link. Um, but this one site refused to do them. They had 2000 pages of her unique and original content on men and divorce. That should have been a, right? Men and divorce, like all these articles, really good articles, really well written. He had 85 visitors the first month I met. They left me on their analytics. I kept telling them to remove me, they didn't. I just checked in like eight, 10 months later just to see what happened. They never did any link building or link acquisition and they had 80, like less than hundred visitors because despite all that content, they had no links to the site. But, and now uh, uh, originally years ago, you could get, cause that's how I first got known to some of the people in industry is I did rank a site and didn't know why without links, but you had to have links to maintain it. But we had, 2,000 pages of your original unique content and Google scooped it up and my lead from Google explained why, but things have changed since then. And when this site was up, you had to have some links to, to get into men and divorce is a very hot topic. And um, they didn't and they died. This The company closed uh, after a year because, or they I think they sold it, but either way, because they just wouldn't do links, you know? Because it, it's putting even something called PR, okay? Yeah, PR Press, is great. B b b th that existed before the internet, before Google, okay? Yeah. You, you pay you pay someone who knows the journalist and gets the journalist to, to talk about you. So even if you don't pay directly the website or the, the people who build the link, you pay someone who does outreach. Right. So, and or you do link bait or you do something. Um, this, uh, I really think it's time for Google to stop this, um, this quote of, uh, just build awesome it's sort content. Of like the core updates where they say you can't do anything. Yeah. It can. There's a reason people rank higher than you now mm. than you do. Mm. The reason you don't have your rankings anymore. Because there's something you can do. You just have to know what it is. Same with links. You have to know, mm -hmm. you know. I always tell people, though, when they ask me about doing link building, I can analyze your links and I can tell you whether you have a good link profile. But link building is, is a, and link acquisition is, is an entire specialty unto its own. So I always have them hire somebody that I recommend to do that. Because if you do it wrong, you can hurt a site. But not like you could in the Penguin days. You're not going to lose 90% of your traffic. You'll just lose the links you paid for. Mm -hmm. So if you invest the 10,000 in links, you'll get that ranking. And then like six months later, you go in and you go, why did we drop? And you think it's an update or something. Well, no, it's because Google devalued all those crap links you bought from a bad PBN or something. Uh, I shared it on Twitter. So I think you read it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I knew it before those community managers in Zurich, Switzerland. Uh, <laughs> because I, I heard it from a Googler way. Just, where by the way, just, to be, just to be fair, I do think that they do what they're, they're allowed to by Google. So I do think they honestly try to be helpful. Yeah. Like it tells Co them that certain things yeah. they have to say. And so yeah. they say that. So yeah. Com community management. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> uh, but I just want to make sure that if anyone hears this, they don't think I'm slamming those people because I think those people do a good no, job. Guys, guys, it's, it's, I, it's my it's, fight. Fighting the Google propaganda is, is my fight. Not I fight it too. No, I fight it too. But I just want to make sure it's not people driven. It's Google that I blame. Not, exactly. And uh, no, I'm not pointing any fingers there. I'm just saying that uh, the... Um, how can I frame this? Um, there's only one truth. Yeah. One truth, which, which is, do you rank or not? Do you achieve results or not? That's also something because so many people in our industry are just talking, you know, they're doing a big talk. So uh, how do you say it? Talk the walk, walk the talk, like something the like that, okay? There's way too many people like blah, 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 talking, talking, talking. Uh, every time I'm not 
going to say where because I don't want people to go follow me everywhere, but there is one place on the internet where I play a little bit and there's a lot of these people who spread. The, so somebody is going to ask, uh, how do I buy links? And you get 15 guys uh, saying, don't buy links, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, here. Yeah. This is how you buy links. You do this, you do this, you do this. And then I get, I get roasted. I'm like, okay, just show me one single piece of content you produced with no links and you got uh, traction. I never got an answer in the past 15 years. Never. Oh, I can ever. give you an answer to that because it was actually, but it's totally different because it was a different time. No, but I, I know what I'm saying because I did produce content that got links. I know well, how no, to do it. Links are so important and you have to have links. I, no, I, 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 links. Like, yeah. like organic links. I know how to yeah, do content yeah, marketing. Yeah. But yeah. those people who are spreading that Google propaganda, they don't know what they're talking about. They, yeah. They're just repeating this thing, but they've never done it. They, they don't know what it takes to write a piece like the complete guide about uh, RunBrain. They have no clue. How many hours is that? With the research, well, because I'd already, yeah, uh, probably at least thirty or forty. Okay. Hours, hours. Okay. Okay, guys, thirty or forty hours, one single piece of content. No. Are you able to do that? And and if you are able to do that, and if you are able to be published on a very respectable and famous publication. Um, yeah, you are part of that top 1% of the pyramid of content producers. So, so yeah, you, but if you, if you don't, if you don't know how to do that kind of content, uh, I'm sorry to say you, you won't, you won't get anywhere. And, um, being scared of Google, I understand why you are scared of Google, but it's not a good way to, to leave your SEO. The only problem the main problem, and we spoke about it, made we, oh, two hours and 12 minutes. <laughs> we, we do have to talk about it before we get off, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we need to, we need to, but okay, before, before, before we talk about the ET, um, I don't even know what I wanted to say. <laughs> no, I, I lost my thought. So let's go. Okay, ET, let's go. We need well, to. Well, when you're, when you're talking about a lot of stuff that gets like blown out of proportion or people don't mm -hmm. just. I don't think of the experience maybe to analyze. People really need to know, first of all, the quality raters guide is written for quality raters. It is not an SEO guide. I do tell people in my talks to read it because if you built a site based on everything in the quality raters guide, you would rank well because it's what Google's looking for in a good site. But a lot of it, it is not related to SEO ranking signals or ranking factors. And so you could spend a lot of money trying to fix a site like on a core update because everyone says go read the eat for core updates. Don't do that. Um, because I had like a doctor come spend. I spent $40,000 having all my content rewritten. And I was like, didn't you didn't you oversee it the first time? Like it was an accurate, like I shouldn't say accurate, bad word because Google doesn't look at accuracy. But was it well written? He's like, yeah, it was well written. I oversaw it. You know, just people finished it for me. And I said, well, that's why you didn't get a lift off $40,000 of new content because your content wasn't your problem. Because um, his content was already good. It's like you were talking about before. You can't, if you already great content, you don't, you can't get greater content. Like if you've already gotten the max Google's going to give you for that content, you're not going to get more out of it. Um, so the quality raters guide is only a goal for the algorithms. And it even says that in the quality raters information, the guide information. So it's the types of sites Google wants to surface. It doesn't mean that Google's looking at everything in the quality raters guide when it comes to a site. Let me, let me rephrase just one point. Yeah. It's, and, uh, I think people should, I've spoken to quality raters. What, what people should try get hired as a quality raider. You don't audit sites. You audit a SERP. Right. A search engine result page. So yes, yeah. inside that SERP, you have sites, but uh, no, they look at the overall thing. Okay. 
And yeah. yes, you have individual <laughs> within this this entire spectrum, but that's they they are not they are not there to. Uh, I don't even think they look at backlinks actually. Uh, do, no. do they? Yeah. No, they don't. Huh? No. They 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 are not there to pass on to uh, the anti spam team and, and, and so on. It's not yeah. at all about that. Uh, so, yeah. so so people are uh, very mistaken about the this quality rating thing. Uh, they yeah, so take they, it totally wrong. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just excited. <laughs> no, no, so, no, exactly, no. exactly. Because no. what you, your point was really well said. Because they look at the search result, and then Google wants to know did they surface quality sites in that search result. So the quality rater guides gives them a list of things that make a quality site so mm. that when they rate the search results, they can say, no, they weren't good or yes. they Like if all spam showed up, the quality raters yeah. guide gives them an indication if that's spam. They're not they're not SEOs. They're not algorithm mm. experts. They're not. They probably don't even know what 90 percent of what we talked about today are. So the quality rater guide dumbs down the algorithms for quality raters to be able to checklist websites that are produced in a SERP after an algorithm uh tweak or change uh, uh. and it's not seo and so i see people mentioning eat all the time i improved my eat i did my there's no eat the eat, google doesn't have an eat score google doesn't uh. have an eat rating google doesn't have eat ranking factors gary Ish says it's hundreds of algorithms right because it's about seo and if you get a core update issue going and improving your eat may or may not change your site but not because eat was the problem but because somewhere in there when you did the quality raters guide stuff you hit on the thing that was actually wrong with your site so mm. it's 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 really important that people understand that eat is not anything more than the types of it, the, what google breaks down for quality raters to understand what types of sites they want to surface it's a mindset it's the end result is the it, yeah. it's what you you want to achieve it's not a it's not a trick it's not an optimization furthermore Remember that with SEO, and we tweeted that long, not long ago uh, on the mega thread, with PPC, you buy real estate. You buy a keyword ranked for a certain number of time, and you pay for that. For SEO, you pay to try to prove you are relevant. That's a, and, and quality. And quality, you know? So, so, so that's a lot trickier. Uh, it's an investment. It's because, an investment, exactly. It, yeah. It's not like you you buy assets that uh, you can, but then of course once the click is consumed, you need to buy another one. Uh, you need to be a little bit crazy to to do SEO. You need to have a certain mindset, and uh, if you want guarantees, then open your wallet and buy ads. Well, no, it's true. And the other thing is I always put in my contracts or my proposals investment. I never say like cost because the it's an investment. Like someone hired me to do an audit. We did an audit. He fixed what I told him to fix. They got a hundred percent increase over the last two months on their traffic because they did what I told them. What they invested in me has been paid for now 10 times mm -hmm. over. Right. But it'll continue to do that as long as they don't mess it up after I'm gone. If I, after the audit's gone and everything's fixed, It'll stay that way as long as they stay on top of what I told them to stay on top of. Whereas an ad, once you don't pay for it, you, you don't have mm. the traffic. So they're both necessary. They're both relevant. Mm -hmm. But just a different in SEO, it's an investment. And that's why when you hire an SEO, you're not paying for their hourly time. You're paying for their knowledge base because that's how the SEO gets you traffic. If the SEO doesn't have a good knowledge base, they're not going to get you a lot of traffic and you might waste money. Whereas if you have an SEO like myself or Jenny Hesless or I always say her last name wrong or Alan Flywise, you know, you get your money back and, you know, twofold, fivefold, tenfold over the course of time because we helped you fix what was wrong with your site. Okay. Now, to even go further on that one, I would say that aren't you tired of seeing SEO as an add-on in now 2021? It's just that thing that you put on afterwards <laughs> instead <laughs> of it would be so much simpler okay christine the only problem in your career is you haven't 
played enough with your own website, especially you haven't spammed enough. You haven't done enough black hat in your life. Oh, so I've hung out with enough black hat. I know, so. I know. But I know a lot. <laughs> no, but but my point is when you do SEO at a certain level for yourself, you can guarantee results. Like I can totally guarantee my own results. Sure. For clients, you can only guarantee the means because at the end of the day, that's not your website, that's not your company, and you have limited power. Yeah. Um, but that's in, why I never guarantee. A, in a perfect world, and I'm amazed that even if it's about 20 years, uh, let's say that our industry exists for like seriously, still today, SEO which is the number one acquisition pipeline from any KPI uh, you want to take it, it's still an add-on. It, it's still not like before you start, even before you have a website, you can do a, a even before you, you just to, to start, to, to start to smell the market, um, not the website. Of course, you need a website to do SEO. Well, no, okay, no, but you don't. Though you can be brought in before the website's even built. <laughs> but but what I'm determine. saying is not the main website. You know, you you can already have uh, web pages. Uh, but but before you have your catalog, your big e-commerce, you can already do so many things with SEO before even going into like the big uh, big website with the big development with the big uh, big. I mean. Um, and maybe it goes back to the fact that we scare, we don't exist. And even within the digital marketing industry, we kind of scare everybody else because we have those superpowers that can destroy <laughs> and or make a reputation. Yeah. I don't know what it's for, but uh, <laughs> don't you have that feeling that, that we're kind of like the outcast of the digital marketing industry a little bit? <laughs> I think if uh, I know some companies are better now, like I'm working with a company right now that's migrating to another main, like a brand, and they brought me in now to help them design, develop, and avoid road bumps, right? Because retrofitting a website for anything is way more expensive than getting it right at the beginning. Exactly. The, the problem is people think of it that way instead of thinking of it like a house. Like, if I was going to design a house, I'm going to bring the architect in and I'm going to have him know my dream for this house and he's going to build it so that if we want to add on to it, I'll have electrical work where I need and a sewer pipe and a water pipe and, and I have the footing and I have the right foundation that can support that house, right? The problem is a lot of companies bring us in as the architect after the house is already built. And we're like, well, um, that room does, the stairs don't lead to anything and that water pipe can't make it to the house. And I know you want to put a bathroom there, but you can't because there's no you know, load bearing wall and you can't put a toilet because there's no sewer. So if you bring us in in the beginning, we can help you design the house and the foundation to be as big as you want from the get go and to make sure that you have you know, user intent and proper architecture and linking and conversion optimization, which is something SEO should really add onto their skill set. Um, and so you're so right. They bring us in as this add-on later. And then we're like, well, you have to fix all these things you broke. And, and then they're like, mm -hmm. well, we don't want to fix all those things we broke. We'll find somebody who tells us we don't have to fix things. Or the opposite, you fix it all. And they get all the traffic and they go, you know, we think we can do this ourselves now. It's the only job I've ever been in where you get fired for doing a really good okay. job. That, that, that was the final <laughs> point because we're on two hour and 30 <laughs> minutes now. <laughs> okay, you have the cleaner, you have the saver, you have someone like Christine who can take, you can re really like save your website from impossible situations. And going back to my statement about the fact that uh, technical SEO is very ungrateful and you don't get rewards for being good, you just get downgraded for being bad. Let me finish by saying that this is just the first level. This is just to start to play the game. Now, if you want to play the game with the big boys, you need to have a SEO right by your side. Always, all the time, yeah. every day. And that person needs to have the power to block a, a, a design feature. 
a, a whatever special effect or tool or feature you want to put on, that SEO needs to have the power to block that. Because something, the last example, and it's driving me crazy, those, those, those chat pop-up thing like where you yeah. chat with the customer, uh, they don't care about page speed, the, the builders of those pop-up chat things, okay? <laughs> so you could have the fastest website in the world, you put on that plugin, and then you load in 20 seconds. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's difficult because the only way to do that is especially for in-house consultants we have it easy we we come in and and we get paid a lot of money to uh to the definition of a consultant is you are paid to say politely the bad news the bad news okay yeah. <laughs> but yeah. in-house you need to hustle you need to prove with whatever you have that what you do works deliver results and little by little you the pie okay of traffic it will start two percent six ten once you get to 25 people will start to pay attention and you take the power and you take over and you can stop uh developers from doing very stupid things usually hopefully hopefully i, I, worked, uh, I worked for a billion dollar brand that had a site built on the same platform two sites We'd fix something on the platforms and they would both go up at the same time. They'd both have these big jumps at the same time of the fix. And you could not convince this the the VP mm. that it was because of oh. the fix. And that happens frequently. I remember one site, I got them 200,000 new users a day. And I spent six hours on Slack explaining how it wasn't an article that they wrote. <laughs> I even have an example with very high level SEOs. Maybe one of the best of the best in France. And it was a very complex setup with CDN servers. And to please Google Boat, there was a server in California near Mounted View. Very good idea, right? You want Google Boat. If it goes to Europe, it's 6,000 kilometers one way and so, so, so 18 kilometers to, to visit your site. Uh, that's that's a long way. If you have a server uh, near Mountain View, Google Boat, that's good. Okay. Well, very experienced SEOs. We built the website, did everything fine, and you couldn't see it because on the front end, uh, everything was fine, but they didn't update the, the, the server in California. Okay. <laughs> That was the old website that Google was seeing with the old linking. So call that a disaster. And those were experts SEOs. So it could happen even to the best of us. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, any <laughs> SEO can make, can make a mistake, like, you know, because there's so many moving parts. But I think that's the thing that clients don't understand. There's so many moving parts. So when you're like someone I'm working with, they put a a filter nav on a section that didn't really need a filter nav, you know, like when you click, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, but now we only have one page with the same content or we're doing, we're going to have to do a, a, a kludge to get the different pages with that content. Why don't we just build it like a regular site? And they're like, Oh, you know, we'll just make that a tertiary in page nav and they'll still get the same effect. It just won't be a filter. And the developers like to do what's cool and easy and fun, not, standard old tertiary nav so that's why i'm sure it was there because developers get bored too and they always have to do the same thing but um but yeah so it's it's really easy um there's so many parts like one time someone rolled out on a site a calendar and i said oh sure you know it's just a calendar plugin and it's not it wasn't a plugin i mean it was a, a component i sure it'll be fine and they rolled it out and we went down overnight like 30 percent like over a couple days and I'm like okay three days in a row that's a problem and I go and I crawl the site and find out that that calendar component that they put in creates a page automatically every time Google scrolled it infinitely forever and ever and ever. So it was getting caught in the cal When I scrolled it, it went to 2042. Like I just let my crawler go and I came home and I'm like, why do I have 20,000 extra links? And I've 
or no, it was more than that. It was like 200,000 extra likes. And I'm like, because the calendar just created a page. Yeah. And so they, they blocked I, that. We got all our traffic back. <laughs> I think you are, you want to break the world record in the Guinness book for breaking a crawler for screaming frog i think i think you want to, because some of the numbers you should tell me sometimes about yeah, the number of, of of pages or url you crawl is insane <laughs> i have to give a shout out to site bulb and screaming frog because i use both and they're both very helpful but uh site bulb has probably made more changes to their to their programming because of me than <laughs> anyone because i always have problems they're always so nice because i have such big sites to crawl and they're and originally they only started with two million pages and i'm not like 10 million pages or 20 million pages or more than that and so they have created changes just because i had a problem with it which i have to give them so much credit for uh, changes that helped everybody i mean mm. they're not just helping me but because my sites are so big it broke them and so they're like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll fix that for other people. And we're only us big, the ones who do the big crawls. We're, I think, mm -hmm. only like 2 to 5% of their their client base. But I have to give them so much credit for, like, they literally get on calls with me in the middle of the night and go through what's wrong and then <laughs> fix it for me. Yeah, love it, love yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're great. So they're both really great about that. Because um, without those tools, I'd be sunk. Because every other tool requires page limits. And mm. I can't spend $5,000 on a client to crawl their pages. And a lot of SEOs go, well, I just do a sample. But because I'm doing recoveries and, and reclamations, I have to see everything that's there. You can always go back to Xeno. Yeah, <laughs> that's been popular lately. <laughs> that was my first crawler. Yeah, that was everybody's first call, I think. Yeah. I have created sitemaps with that. But did you? I, I tried to speak to the guy once. Uh, he's a little weirdo. Uh, he's so I, strange. He calls, you? <laughs> but anyway, thanks, thanks to for him. But thanks to him for for uh, Xenu was definitely uh, very helpful back in the days. Uh, now the callers, like Screaming Frog or Sidebulb, with a consultant behind. 100%. I'm having a little issue with those automated audits. What's your point of view on that? You know what I'm talking about? Those websites yeah. that audit automatically your sites and make well, recommendations. Even SiteBulk gives a lot of recommendations, right? They tell you the hints and stuff. But I asked other SEOs because I was curious um, if they gave anybody the whole report and nobody does. Because as I told a client the other day who went and bought it, and then are now using it. And I'm like, be really careful because what you get back in the report isn't necessarily going to move your needle or necessary or even has to be fixed. So it's telling you all the things it sees wrong, not necessarily the state of your SEO. So SiteBulk gives me great insights. And then I determine mm -hmm. from what I get from them, what's relevant, what's not, what's, what's actually an issue that Google will have a problem with, what's not. Because a crawler can only do so much. Now, I love the hints that they give because I just go to their, the page they link to I copy that and I put it into the report and then I add my own information because I don't have to rewrite it every time that that problem exists, right? So um, so that's really nice. But uh, yeah, if automated ones though that just give a report that someone gives a client and I've been in a room with another SEO who did that, which was really awkward because the client's like, well, analyze what they gave us. And I'm like, um, uh, it's garbage because all they did is run it through like a $10 report and it gave back like five pages about links and then like header tags and title tags well it's, like, it's even beyond that what they don't have is the ability to um, evaluate the context and it depends yeah. okay the favorite uh, oh, answer it depends <laughs> so so let's say let's say that uh uh, I run a Magento into a automated audit and uh, the return I get is you should uh, externalize your JavaScript. Okay, good luck externalizing <laughs> Magento exactly. plugins JavaScript. Good luck with that. <laughs> or like I got one back the other day that said you had two canonical tags. Right. And so it doesn't tell you where the two canonical it just tells you you have two canonical tags on every page. But I go to the page and there's not two canonical tags. So I know that the canonical can also be served in the HTTP response header. Mm. I go to the response header, there is the canonical tag. So if someone who didn't know anything about SEO or coding got that report, what would they do with that? 
like they wouldn't know to look at the response code. Uh, and you, sh you should even be able to like self-destruct your, your, your precautization because, you know, uh, I don't know, like something like filling up all the art of the images. All right. Uh, unless the images that want to rank for Google images, like, like why do you care about filling out all the arts? Like that's not going to change anything, you know? <laughs> no, that's, okay. We're going to disagree there. All types because I do accessibility. Alt tags act as actual anchor text in a link. So if the image is a link, then that, that's the, alt text oh, no you, did, you didn't listen to the beginning. I said, okay. unless you want to do uh, SEO on Google images. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, no, we don't just in general, though, because the anchor text works on, in an image in the alt text. But I had people that like um, the alt text looks fine, and then they put paragraphs in their alt text. Well, that's, that's something different. But what, what I'm trying to say is that we have all those tiny moving parts, like, like you said, and the, one of the biggest um, element that people like in my audits is that uh, I put a, uh, I, I had different version. One, at first I started like green light, orange light. Uh, uh, I did that uh, once too. <laughs> and, and now it's uh, a percentage more the, to, to green, to red. But I give I give a certain value uh, of of danger or, or priority to what I think is more or less important. Now, ASEO because um, action has two walls in front. One, uh, technical limitations. Like I said, good luck externalize, yeah. uh, externalizing JavaScript on a Magento plugin. So that's a technical limitation. And two, marketing priorities. You can do whatever you want. Uh, for example, the homepage is a good example of a page that I don't use a lot unless I just want to get some page rank because I can't optimize it like I want for a keyword. There's too many marketing priorities on that page that mess around with how I want to, um, uh, you know, target something. So, uh, yes, people, remember, technical limitations, marketing priorities, they are not your enemies. They are just elements that you need to consider and you need to adjust do you want to push all the way throughout all those walls because it's so important or should you yourself move back and say yep yeah, marketing priorities technical limitations seos goes out the window but you need to protect yourself my trick is every single call is recorded by the client it's mandatory because i know what i'm saying i can claim that i'm wrong and it never ever ever came back to me on the hey he said she said he said you know because it's all on on the record um, it, at the end of the day it's not your website it's not your company but you also need to protect yourself because, and you know that, uh, you've been sometimes fired for that, for doing your job, because they will find a way to come back at you and figure out that uh, it's your fault or they don't need you or whatever it is. So or yeah. you do a really good job and they think it's easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. I did have one site where um, they lost traffic because they were attacked. And it was a it was a special kind of attack where they confused Google. The two sites were the same site, and I told the uh, the the CM was he CMO then? Anyway, he changed positions. That we needed to do a security audit because every time we try to get our rankings back, we would get we'd go down again. And so I got him a beginning security audit for eight thousand dollars, which is nothing in security. I just know somebody who is one of the top experts and they are willing to do because I did a lot of research ahead of time, an initial look for 8,000. Normally it's 50,000 start. You want to hire FireEye, the one that just found the hack for the US government? They don't even talk to you unless you're going to spend $50,000, right? Sure. I know somebody there and I asked them and they told me. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't do that and they lost a lot of money and then he blamed me. 
And I was like, I told you what was wrong. I told you what we needed to do. I talked to even one of the community managers who had confirmed to me that yes, Google was confused and Google would have to figure out that, that these were not the same sites. Oh. Um, and, and I wound up losing the contract because they didn't want to do the work. They didn't want to pay the $8,000. They were losing money and they decided it would be easier to get rid of me. So, and then of course I knew the head mm. of the board and he said he would have me come back because he did not blame me for it. Um, but then I was left on their Slack for some reason, didn't even know it, got a notification, went in and found another SEO, got the job, SEO, the, like the new job, like months later, really liked him, knew that they needed the work. So I just didn't try to get the job back. So. People, you're listening. You will never ever be able to come close to the mind of Christine because she has the ability to see that puzzle. Uh, it's like in the Matrix, okay? She reads that, that okay, this language and she sees things that others don't see. We spoke about this uh, and we, we, we made the um, analogy with the photography, but again, that's another podcast. Now, if I want to give you... If you want to give you one advice that you can take from Christine's mindset is this red flag that must light up whenever you see something twisted. Like it needs to be stupid, stupid, simple. Remember, Googlebot is, has no brain. Googlebot, you need to make it easy. It needs yeah. to be stupid, stupid, simple. If it's crooked, if it's twisted, it won't work. It won't work. So if you need to take, because we are running on three hours, we're breaking <laughs> records here. So we need to, we need to shut up. But one last thing for the, for the few of you who, who uh, went all the way. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, uh, I guess, do you agree that it's maybe the one little thing if they need to, to, to take from, from your mindset is that light bulb that uh, you know this red flag that lights up when you see something that is just no it, it's too complicated if it, it won't work look at this <laughs> I, i'm very sometimes i feel and, and everyone gets imposter syndrome but because i'm not doing like crazy algorithm chasing things i just believe in you have to build a really strong foundation you have to make sure that you layer that foundation with good content good links um, and then you have to uh, keep an eye on your technical issues uh, and then uh, make sure that your site adapts as Google changes. Um, that's kind of it. Like, and look for anomalies. Um, if you have issues on your site, look for the thing that sticks out like a red flag. Like, this is weird. Why is this doing that? You know, and what, what people don't understand is that, yes, we had the Xenu, we had the screen, swimming frog, whatever. But you or I and many others what how did we start doing audits you put yourself into google both shoes and what do you do okay first thing http headers okay next robots.txt okay then i'm gonna start uh well that was even before sitemap uh, xml then i mean you put yourself in google boats mindset and you yeah. visit the site like you are google boat that's how we learn how to do seo audits yeah uh, i was doing them before we had crawler tools yeah except, you know, i was like when screaming frog came out i was like oh my gosh i don't have to do this by hand anymore yay but even with Screaming Frog, I, I still do this this Google yeah. bot mindset type of visit and try to I click everywhere and I look and yeah. I mean usually you, you you look at the source code and not the the front, but still uh, I do both. Yeah, I don't just do technical. I do the whole site. It's just that mm. I always start at technical because if the site is broken, Google will have problems doing the site well. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at one site right now that has so many dead ends in the site that mm -hmm. Google can't even reach all the pages. That's the kind of thing you have to fix first. And then after we fix that, then we can go to the stuff like just mm -hmm. optimizing content or just tweaking. Mm -hmm. You got to fix like the most, if your steps are broken and your door doesn't work and your heat's mm -hmm. not on, you got to fix all that first before you like paint and put in the furniture. That's the whole thing, because on one end, you have this whole discussion about AI, about like, 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 like uh, cars that drive themselves, about this whole technology that Google is putting forward and how uh, advanced they are and they have the 
greatest names in, in science and the, all the money in the world. But at the end of the day, uh, the Google, the search engine is something that goes back from the 90s and they build up until if you know a little bit about technology, uh, guys, it's a mess, okay? <laughs> Google, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty messy, <laughs> the, 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 the number of languages, the, the, the billions lines of codes and wow. Um, so stay simple, okay? <laughs> and if I could leave one uh, one comment about all that, whenever you hear a theory on SEO, whenever you think something might be true, before you accept it, think: Can they scale that over every country, every language, every dialect, every niche that they serve in an instant in a retrieval of a document? Because if they like, when they were saying facts, was Google was looking at facts. There's no way you could, first of all, look at facts because facts always contradict each other in some way. But at the other side, how would you scale that over every language, every book that's ever been written, every fact that exists, every... So you have to always remember Google scale. Because mm. just because it looks like it works on your website or in your niche or your market or your local, it had to have been scaled to every other place in the world that Google applies those algorithms. And so is it scalable? PageBeat is scalable right? Uh, content quality is scalable. Content facts are not, right? So it's that kind of thing. Uh, you have to you have to keep it simple in the sense that mm -hmm. since Google has to scale it to everything everywhere at the same time in an instant, then it has to be simple. It can't be mm -hmm. super complex because how would they apply that? At the scale of Google, I heard a quote, it was from um, one of the guys at Google AdWords, not Google search. But uh, I guess the same principle applies also to Google search, but if especially for AdWords where you can't mess up, like leave two years people in the shit <laughs> when they did, okay, five minutes of, of something wrong with AdWords and, and the phone starts to ring. And uh, so they have what they call the safety check, meaning you can have something amazing in the lab, okay? If it's going to break what's going on, like right now, the, the existing, um, no, doesn't matter if it's a revolu revolution, doesn't matter if it's the most advanced tech you ever saw in your life, if it's going to break whatever is in place, no way. Yeah, exactly. And like on the, I'm sorry, just on the no, factual, no, that's it. Yeah. The, the facts thing, a lot of people got it because they read a paper from Google. They didn't read the end summary where she said that this cannot be scaled to the size of Google with in any cost parameter. So this could not be done. So that's the, there's always a limiting factor and you have to know the limiting factors before you decide a theory could be true. And that's definitely the limiting factors, what you're talking about and, 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 and how, if it can't break something, if it has to be scalable, it has to be able to work instantly. If it's coming in the search retrieval, um, all those things have to be done. Not to mention all the prep that goes into it ahead of time. Um, you know, the machine learning and the language and the user intent and all those things. Yeah. yeah. So when you start getting really complex, it's not scalable. So on one hand, you think that it's very complex, but it is, it is. It's, well, it's complex in its details. The details are complex. But but, but the, the the you can't you can't believe that it's a, like a super machine, super smart, like, like uh, yeah, it's not a human brain yet. Yeah, no, 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 no. It won't. Uh, it won't be, and uh, most definitely the future of search. Like I said, uh, I'm looking at something like Google Discover, and I'm looking at uh, the mobile uh, as a device as a whole, uh, more than Google, the search engine that we've known for so long, and text on web pages. Uh, it's beyond that. But anyway, it's almost two hours now. <laughs> We gotta go. We can both <laughs> talk when we get together. It was fun. <laughs> if anyone lasted this long, we really appreciate it. We we uh, we are breaking records. Uh, I I I'm pretty sure this is the longest of them all. Yes, um, yes. Congratulations, <laughs> Christine. You broke a record. <laughs>
But anyway, this is SEO stories. So it's the story of SEO of Google told by those who made it because yes, it's unique in the history of humanity. Not so many of us were able to um, start an industry um, and, and make a, a job out of something that uh, didn't exist before. So true. Very true. Um, it was a great pleasure to have you back. But in fact, it's the first one that I will publish. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you're watching, you're going to go back in time when you see me in the other one. Well, sometimes it will be different because it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you, you still haven't cut your banks. But, but my beard oh. was longer and uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, don't pay attention to, to the features. Um, it doesn't matter. There's no, um, it's not a series like I, I shot with Bill where we, we went, uh, in, uh, order from, from start to finish with, uh, with you and the others. It's, um, one, um, one podcast sends on its own. But for sure, there will be more. I already have a lot of you on my hard drive, and uh, there is more to come. Well, thank you for having me. It's always fun. Always enjoy the conversation. Well, Christine, I could not do it without you. It's a serious SEO conspiracy, after all, right? You, uh, who, who do I need to fight uh, the conspiracies? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you, 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 you are the one who who. Uh, um, changes into Hulk if you see uh, bullshit about SEO. Okay, this is private joke on Twitter, mega thread, reface app if you haven't tried it. Yes. <laughs> face app, uh, face app, uh, Laurent and I both became the Hulk on face app. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you haven't used face app, it's, uh, it's very fun, but it's also a little creepy how good it is. <laughs> you have. Reface, reface, not face app. Reface. Yeah, reface. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I even see that they do deep fakes. Uh, video deep fake just from an image, yeah. Like, 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 okay, but we are getting into another <laughs> rabbit hole, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Science fiction for next time, okay. Thank you for watching, Thank dear you. Christine. Take care, and until next time, au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>